Chapter 101 Author Some typos in Chapter 100 Saul was said to be around for two decades then it said 5, idk how I missed that in the edit but the number is 4. His name has floated around for at least 40 years. Dash 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 dash. Glint Island visibly shook as nearly 22,000 pirates rushed forwards to exterminate the 3,800 or so rebellious ones. The warring cries of adrenaline and excitement mixed in with the yells of greed and yearning, creating quite the festival. The air shuddered as hundreds of swords waved around and the bangs of bullets shooting erupted from rifles, blood slowly pouring out and forming rivers. It was not only a fight but rather an extermination. Soul's forces deemed these 3,800 unfit to stand against their overlord and were rather enjoying the one-sided battle. Alas, even in the 3,800 pirates, quite a few had big names and just a big of bounties. Goo goo gaga, my baby pirates, kill them all. Luro luro, cut them to pieces. Moo moo moo, give me a s moo ch you little calves. Boss baby Victor, Jack the Ripper, Mooey the Milkmaster. Bounties of 479 million, 401 million and 469 million, respectively. Dash dash dash, on the outskirts of the plaza. The battle waged on as pirates fell by the hundreds on both sides as the rebellious few were quite intent on winning. Of course, if 99% of these pirates were fighting, there were a few who would rather keep a distance of 10 islands between themselves and the fight. Drop the sails, quick. We need to leave before they turn their attention to us. A man called out to his panicked crew. Yet in the midst of the retreat, a voice called out. Hum. The ever bold Tony, the tiger, of the striped pirates is turning tail and scurrying away. Yurufufu, how deplorable. The man in question, the captain of the striped pirates, turned his eyes to where the voice originated from. You are, Cupid the lust. The woman gave him a wink as she slowly yet seductively walked towards the man on the ship. Now, why don't you all just stop what you are doing and help out this maiden who needs your help? She said in a soft voice. Tony, alongside his crew, already had the slivers of lust flowing in his eyes even before her sultry call, yet now, his very being was calling out to quench their thirst. One by one, his trusty crewmates' eyes widened as they slowly lost control of their body. Hi. Cupid Sama, Tony, a man worth 206 million berries could only quake in despair as he recalled the woman's power, the lust lust fruit. It allowed the user to control the bodies of their victims via lust. And Cupid was quite the rare beauty, that added to the low amounts of women on the ship, caused the striped pirates to fall in her grasp. Now, why don't you help me kill all those scary people over there? Cupid called out, her words laced with her fruit powers. Hi, X80. Very go. Cupid could not finish her words as she suddenly felt something coming. Fwoo asterisk. Fwoo asterisk. It sounded like the winds above were howling and whirling. F W O O O O. Cupid looked up and saw a shadow. Boom. Rumble. The shadow slammed onto the ship carrying the striped pirates as the wood holding it together simply gave way from the momentum of the object. Under the shocked eyes of the onlookers and even those who were still fighting nearby, a rather loud laugh boomed all over the area. Woro ro ro. Did I step on something? The eyes glued on the walking monster suddenly shot to the far distance as a ship slowly came into view. The words printed on the sails read, R O C K S, with a flaming skull for the O. Oh. The very sight of the enormous Titanic was enough to fill the others with dread and despair. The ship finally came to a halt, only meters away from the shore. The shadow. Cast from the ship to the ground span so very wide that the ones in its area thought night had descended upon them. Creak. The giant ramp slowly creaked as the gears and pulleys activated. Thud. Asterisk. With a loud clang, it hit the ground as volumes of dust rose from its very weight. A handful of people walked out, bringing the very fears of the living alongside them. TT the rocks pirates. These monsters are here too. A man gulped out. His companion could only nod in apprehension. Edward Newgate, he killed the former overlord, Esso Borealis and now they have come here. Don't forget Thaddeus Enigma, the man who even the great advisor Suru couldn't keep up with. And the one who took him down is here too, Sin Incarnate Damien. Ellipsis. Many suppressed whispers went on as the newly arrived stood tall upon the shore. Kaido walked to the back, his massive frame slightly less than Charlotte Linlin who cackled with her homies waiting to be used. 
Silver Axe in his shiny armor walked beside the drinking pirate, Captain John. Shaki had both his swords ready as they glinted in the morning sun, two cigars smoking in the maw of the Golden Lion. Whitebeard stood tall with his precious Murakumogiri in hand, his glorious hair flying in the wind as he heard the cries of war. Damien, who was simply spanning his observation, picked on the powerful presences nearby and could only grin in the coming change. Grr, the groaning of earth could be heard as another man walked in front of the group of walking calamities, his wild crimson hair alongside the slightly steaming blade at his hip, it was Zebek. Every step he took left behind footprints that would seep into the path ground and left it black and ravaged. Like the beast he was, Zebek took a deep whiff of the bloody smell flowing around the island, a savage grin appeared on his face. He cracked his neck and let out some animalistic noises. Zahaha, this is more like it, he laughed. His eyes then glowed in frenzy, kill them all. His words out, the ones behind him disappeared and went to their own parts of the island, wreaking havoc and cutting everyone in their path. Dash 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 dash. Saul, who had once again returned to the raised platform, simply stood there with a confident smile. Even after sensing the arrival of the rocks pirates, the numbers had already lessened. The original 3,800 or so fighting had dropped to 1,300 while Soul's forces were still 20,000 strong. Yet such numbers were nothing overly difficult to deal with in the eyes of the Rock's commanders. Boom, Whitebeard, who wasn't overly fond of using his hockey to knock out the extras, preferred to use his mighty glaive as a substitute. That is, Marakimogiri, of the 12, now 13, supreme weapons. Grr. The ground crumbled in the way of the human giant as Whitebeard slashed the ground in an upward slash. Cracks formed across the air as the tremors were unleashed all over. B-O-O-O-O-M. Rumble. He was a walking natural disaster as all those rushing at him were utterly destroyed. Dash dash dash. Shaki the Golden Lion was a wild force of doom. With the power of the awakened float float fruit, he was nigh undefeatable. Before he stood 4,000 pirates, high on the excitement of pleasing the overlord, with swords drawn and guns ready. Jihahaha, you pathetic pirates are selfish for treasure and flock around like sheep. Shaki gave out a frightening smirk as his right hand slammed on the ground below. Rumble, the ground shook as his fruit powers pulsed. W what is that? The pirates who were ready to cut down the golden lion paused in an ominous fashion. A shadow stretched over the three thousand men. Lion majesty, earth coiling. Shaki started laughing with great zeal as a giant piece of earth sprang out of the ground. He used his powers to break open the ground and fashion the debris into the shape of a lion's head. The raging lion blasted forwards into the sea of pirates as they were enveloped by its majesty. Shiki's laughter echoed over the pained men. Dash 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 dash. Kaido and Big Mom were actually in the same region as they wantonly attacked the horde of 4,000 or so enemies. Kaido brought down his club wreaking havoc under the cries of his victims, each attack left tens of men into nothing but meat paste, their flesh decorating the ravaged lands below. Blood flowed like rivers as the Kaido couldn't be happier. Big Mom was no different, she used Mars and shot hockey-infused bullets while Napoleon was used to cleave and level everything. Dash 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 dash, on another region of Glint Island was a shocking sight. A dark crimson hue lit up the area as the men who were within the said bubble, either fell to the ground with their eyes rolled back, or simply could no longer stand. Hundreds of bodies now laid on the ground, if one was here, they would be unsure if these bodies were of corpses or still breathing men. Damien who had greatly familiarized himself with Yonko level battles after taking down Basara no longer found these foes enticing. With the end of the rocks pirates coming closer and closer, Damien was turning all his focus on getting stronger and more powerful. Every step he took on this island sent out ripples of his will, the steps seemed quite soft in terms of sound yet it was like a gong in the minds of those near. It was the recently acquired skill, natural dread. Sweat trickled down their backs as their very mind was broken down. Alas, conqueror's hockey only reached the fearful and the weak-minded, in the presence of so many new world pirates, some were bound to stand under Damien's hockey. You have a huge bounty, sin incarnate. A man screamed out. I will be rich once I take you down for myself. The bold man who spoke was a battle-hardened veteran of the New World. His name, Weasel the Illusionist, is worth 790 million berries. Demonic Illusion. Shackling Stakes Mirage. 
Weasel's eyes suddenly reddened as some form of power was released, a fruit power. Damien was intrigued and looked straight ahead at the coming attack. Vu. Asterisk. The cold wind blew through as the pirates saw the Sin Incarnate frozen in position. Weasel gave out a relieved smile, though it didn't last. Damien disappeared from where he stood and appeared right in front of the pirate. H. How. Damien just hummed, illusions of that level don't work on me. Damien's eyes then blazed red as two beams shot out, they bounced and twisted in the air at impossible angles. One by one, 2,500 pirates fell as the war ensued. Dash dash dash, back to the shore, Silver Axe and Captain John cut down their own list of enemies while they sensed the earth below seemed to shake. In the distance of the lands was a large cloud of dust, as if an army rushed ahead in a war. Nearly 6,000 pirates were running ahead as they surrounded the Titanic. Captain John of 469 million berries and Silver Axe of 830 million berries. We have come for your head. A few shouted as the rest roared in agreement. The drunken John just laughed, Joho Hoho, you would have been better fighting Newgate or Shaki than to come here. Silver Axe twirled his axe as it slammed on the ground, I concur, by matching here, you have but only sealed your fate. A few instances passed as the 6,000 men held in laughter in a boisterous fit, not taking their, prizes, words seriously. However, all the noise ceased at once. Every living being near the Titanic suddenly felt the cold breath of death as their natural instincts to survive kicked in, the heart pumped blood in a frenzy as their lungs madly swallowed air. As for the reason to warrant such a reaction, it was a single person. XAHAHAHAHA. Dash dash dash. An hour later, time trickled forwards as the noise settled down. Soul's forces had been greatly reduced as smaller skirmishes continued. The initial pirate count of 28,000 had dropped to 4,100. The Rock's pirates and the other bigger names slowly arrived at the platform where the Overlord rested, his six capital vices by his side. So ho ho ho, I see you all won't go down until I take care of you myself, Saul said. Roger, who had arrived with the aid of his very top commanders, joined the conversation, the keys to the new world are for the free. You take away that freedom and you get people like me. Another voice joined in, ho ho, very interesting words, Roger. The man gently landed on the ground, he had a refined appearance and an umbrella in hand. Saul narrowed his eyes, it's nice of you to join us, Patrick Redfield. However, at that instance, an ominous feeling descended everywhere. A black flash landed near the overlord and the other pirates. The only one daring enough to appear so dauntlessly was the great sin, Rox D. Zebek. His wild hair stood erratically as his open chest exposed the many scars he had accumulated in his life so far. The, Inferno Blade, Mokashiroku kept in its sheath as it vibrated in impatience, ready to strike. Zahaha, I've had my fun with your little toys, Saul, he said with a grin. I would bring you under my flag but since you want the throne to the world, then I will kill you myself. The overlord was prideful but not foolish. Rocks D. Zebek, he spoke. Stand in my way and I will burn you down. Upon the bold words, another overwhelming pressure raged out. Saul unleashed his conqueror's hockey as it echoed out with all of its golden red glory as the atmosphere shook in its wake. The man in question just cackled, You are too weak in this form, little zone. Zebek's eyes then started to churn as black sparks of hockey rained down. The ground shook like no tomorrow. The clouds above started to whirl around as powerful winds picked up and raged throughout the sea. Roger grinned as his ace was unsheathed, wahahaha. I can't just watch from the side with all this going off. It seems this day will cause quite the storm, Redfield thought out loud. Paha, how exciting. Alongside his cheery words was another burst of the will of kings as the aloof red showed his strength. With all these kings having unleashed their will, naturally, others soon followed. B-O-O-O-O-M. Boom. Burst. Asterisk. Rayleigh who stood ready by his captain's side, erupted into a silver hue of hockey, his sword drawn. Whitebeard and Shiki had arrived as well, alongside Linlin, Damien and Kaido. Shiki's hair flowed in the chaotic winds, his golden hockey pulsed everywhere. The future world's strongest man smashed the foot of his glaive into the ground as ripples of quakes went off, added with his own white hockey. Linlin chuckled with Napoleon drawn and Mars ready, her pink-colored hockey raging out. Kaido's eyes boiled in thick, 
Black mist as sparks of purple lightning coiled around his club with his will ready to crush everything in its path. Damien who also present naturally unleashed his own dark crimson bubble of hockey as he felt the others do the same. His eyes glowing a fiery red. Yushi in his hand shook incessantly as four supreme weapons were now present on this single island. The sky was thundering as black clouds flooded in under the combined will of ten supreme kings. The flat plains area was now cracked all over as magma started to slowly boil up to the surface as an apocalyptic sight dawned down. The sea kings owe so many kilometers below passed out as even the citizens of the nearby island fell to the ground, unconscious. Giant tides were sent out as the nearby Superbia was doused in great volumes of water. Saul and his capital vices, Zebek and his titans and tragedies, Roger and his commanders alongside Redfield. The clash of kings that will decide this era's future has begun. Chapter 102, 6 Kilometers from Blint Island a man slammed his foot down as he saluted, Teisho Dono, the pirates have begun their war, the scale is rather otherworldly. The admiral looking into the distance nodded, of course it is, so many monsters in one place, this much is to be expected. The impact could be felt even three kilometers away from the clash of kings. The giant tides are the site of raging winds and tornadoes, a truly chaotic sight. All forces start sailing slowly. We will let them tire each other out and annihilate them in a quick and unforgiving charge. Roger. While the rear admiral went to carry out the orders, another voice picked up, Sengoku, don't forget what happened in the post-angelic war. The admiral turned his gaze to the origin of the deep voice, don't worry, we have enough troops to take down all these pirates. Dash 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 dash. To the clash, as of now, Almost all the extra forces on Glint Island had been either killed or knocked unconscious as their bodies were laid out everywhere. A morbid sight, sadly for them, most were thrown into the air when the hockeys collided, a tornado of bodies swirled about as they collectively rained down like hail from a storm. Gurarara, Roger, you better make this boring event fun for me, Whitebeard declared as his naganata shined black. The future pirate king just grinned in response, Newgate. I thought you died since I didn't see you for two months. The words out, the two pirates raced out in greeting. Roger's ace burst with a beautiful shine of dense hockey as bubbles of emission boiled around. Both men and their supreme weapons laced with hockey clashed. B -o 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 M. A cataclysmic sight, the sheer force sent out was causing craters to form as sparks rained all over the island. Their weapons weren't even touching. Dash 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 dash. Redfield. Why is someone like you here? Shaki questioned. His two swords were drawn as they gleamed with a dangerous black light. The Red Count chuckled, how could I miss such an occasion? The event bores me but the outcome draws my very attention. Floop. A sharp blade suddenly shot out of Redfield's umbrella, turning it into a polearm. A purple mist of red sparks danced around him. B-O-O-O-O-M. Once again, a clash so spectacular that the air itself screamed in its wake as the two blades refused to touch. Dash dash dash, you dare get in Saul Sama's way. One of the six commanders roared out. Ma ma ma'am ma, just a few flies. Big mom laughed as she aimed her flintlock at the six. Mazer shot. Bang. Asterisk. A single bullet left the chamber. A simple projectile. Voosh. Asterisk. Three sonic booms went off as the air warped around the bullet as it raced forth. She imbued emission and infusion to her bullet. Damien, who stood nearby, thought to himself as he saw the bubble around it. Gobbler who was on the side of the battle suddenly turned into a 20 feet long boar zone as the thick body glowed in hockey. It was a special fruit, the boar boar fruit, ancient model of the Entelodont. He opened up his maw as it started to absorb the attack's power. Devouring vacuum, Ignavi steeled his sword black as he crashed down upon the single bullet. Slash of fate, three coils of orange strings burst out of Asuka's hand as they wrapped around the bullet. Speed swipe, momentum swipe, acceleration swipe, slowly, the bullet lost its speed, momentum and acceleration. Thud, alas, it fell to the ground under three of the capital vice's attacks. What a babe, a single bullet needed three of us to stop. Jello said as he saw the huffing trio, you overgrown hag, I'll eat your limbs off. Boranzo roared out from his zone form. Hag, big mom grimaced, I'll kill you all. Linlin -lin then switched to her Napoleon, her eyes burst orange as he raged forwards like a berserk beast. 
Dash 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 dash. Wuro ro ro. Take my club. Kaido roared out as his boiling black cannibal club smashed onto a smaller shadow before him. Boom. Ripples of force screeched out as the club was being pushed back by two axes. Your Kaido. Rayleigh warned me about your crazy ass. Scopper Gabon. Roger's left hand man. Laughed as his axes went on with a flurry of attacks. Clang. 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 Asterisk. The mighty club was rained down upon with the attacks while the wielder could only grin in impatience. Dash 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 dash. Damien felt each of the powerful presences focus on their own foes as he glared at his enemy. He was quite a short man, barely nine feet tall. Yet his strength was quite apparent. So ha ho ho. I did not think that Zebek would send one of his little stooges to face me. Pride D. Saul said, Though the blood of the D flows in you, no wonder the world government is so fearful of your rise. Damien paid little attention to the words of the overlord as the latter continued. Say, child, why not join me in my crusade? He asked with a magnetic voice. Once I take down these fools, the whole world will be mine. The sin incarnate could only laugh, this crusade of yours will end in utter defeat. You will be nothing more than another forgotten name, Saul. The era of the overlords will end with you, and I will nail that coffin now. The sin of pride narrowed his eyes yet his smile stayed, how unsightly it is to see youthful delusion. Enigma, Zephyr, Basara. These names may have fallen before you but I am not someone you can stand before. The holy terror then extended both arms out in a graceful way, his eyes shined like two suns as his smile deepened. Boom! A burst of unbelievable heat shot out from Overlord as he rose into the air like a feather in the gentle wind. He was embraced in the warm touch of the day as Soul's body started to change. Per up asterisk, the atmosphere boiled as a golden glow lit around the Overlord. Crackling, the sound of blazing fire was then heard. Damien eyed the dramatic transformation with interest. Dash dash dash, it was said pride D. Soul's power was deeply connected with a mythical figure of ancient times. Under the name of said figure, many were cautious on discussing the tales of this overlord as they feared the retribution of other powers. Even Shaki had difficulty understanding his true power. Originally, Damien could not use his birds to surveil the overlord and only recently did he send over ten behemoth class sea kings to somewhat comprehend Soul's fruit ability. The result intrigued him. Dash dash dash, screech, asterisk. A loud cry of a bird echoed in the muddy horizon waves of heat pulsed all over. The sun shined a bright ray of light down as a holy sight was to view. Behold, my power, Soul's voice boomed. The overlord was bathed in golden flames as they took the shape of sharp feathers with sharp talons for feet. It was a magnificent creature. Damien gave out a smirk as he saw his foe, the mythical fruit that can stand on par with Zebek's death powers. Bird bird fruit, mythical model of the sunbird. The heat that was exuded from Saul was enough to boil the seawater on the shore of the island. Steam fizzed everywhere as the very grassland of Glint Island had burned to nothingness. Only dried earth and broken lands remained. It was enough to warrant the eyes of everyone, they all gave a glance at the creature that spanned at least twenty meters wide in its mythical glory. It was a divine sight as the sun itself seemed to revel in its majesty. As Damien studied the zone form, a screen popped up in his eyes. Dash dash, pride d, Saul, age, infinity, height, 9 feet 1, greater than 65 feet 7 in base form. Devil fruit, bird bird fruit, model sunbird mythical, fruit rating, ultimate class fruit, fruit mastery, nigh awakened, skills, great amounts of pride that fuel exceptional conquerors hockey, has a very special devil fruit that can greatly affect his strength. Hockey, mastered observation, Mastered Advanced Armament, Grand Mastery, 2, 4, C. Strength. Early Stages of High Tier Yonko Plus. Dash dash dash. Damien wasn't surprised by the base strength of the Overlord, it was even above Basara yet slightly below Sengoku and Redfield, yet his fruit made up for that. Another screen expanded in the youth's eyes. Dash 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 dash. Bird bird fruit. Model Sunbird. Zone fruit mythical type. Fruit rating allows the user to transform into a sunbird. Users can produce flames of the sun that burn everything, even the soul. Touches the world law of infinity. Grants infinite energy during the day. Users can infinitely explode upon themselves to be reborn.
Every successful rebirth greatly increases strength, temporarily. Though the user's body must be able to hold said power. Dash dash. Quite the fruit. Damien muttered as he understood why the people say Saul had maintained the same appearance for many decades now, it turned out that his fruit granted him an infinite life. So ha ho ho. Tremble before me. His voice echoed, a sliver of hockey infused in every letter uttered. With this power, all shall be mine. Empyrean. F -w 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 -m. Asterisk. A metallic sound went off as Damien's attire slowly started to be plated with thick, black hockey armor as it wrapped around him. Boom. Cracks of molten red then appeared as crimson energy pulsed throughout Damien's form. Damien was on the exact same level as Saul, early stages of high-tier Yonko. The overlord Saul, in his base form, started to glow with golden flames. A loud screech erupted all over the broken island as blobs of golden flames swirled around, they formed giant balls of fire. From tens to hundreds to thousands of basketball-sized rocks floated around the sunbird. Solar storm. The thousands of balls swam with flames from the sun as they rained down in a world-ending sight. F W O O O O. Asterisk. The wind quaked in their fiery presence, the air howled as the atmosphere cracked. Damien didn't stand still, these balls of flames had the power to burn anything to everything, including his fruit powers. Void space. A crimson curtain, nearly twenty meters in size, opened up before Damien as all matter beyond its protection was turned to absolute void. The raining hell clashed down upon the net that is void of matter. Quote dot 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 quote. There was no sound of the actual collision as the sound waves did not travel where there was nothing but empty space. Damien was slightly pushed into the ground as the force of the attack still traveled onto his body, yet his bones held strong. Rumble. Asterisk. Damien was safe yet the area around him that was bathed in these flames was not. The fire melted through the ground and made its way down to the very roots of the island, even the magma down below was burnt. V's asterisk. The attack halted as the void space fizzled out, Damien stood strong as the holy terror floated in the sky. So ha ho, not bad, child, the overlord voice bellowed out. Let me see if you can survive this. Saul then flapped his majestic wings, flying even further in the sky. He then stopped as he eclipsed the sky below, he was even brighter than the sun as he glowed gold. Damien, shield yourself, now. Sybil's voice echoed in the sin incarnate's head. Even without the warning, Damien's eyes flashed red as his future sight had already shown him what was to come. He saw six seconds in the future, his very soul being attacked. The other powerhouses nearby, Newgate, Roger, Shaki, Red and so on felt it too. Every single one of them, with the exception of Zebek and Linlin, acted swiftly. V's. Asterisk. The gnawing of the atmosphere was the only thing that sounded off as everyone channeled their conqueror's hockey to protect their very souls and minds. Damien, with his grand mastery too over the color of the Supreme King, did the same thing. A dark crimson aura coated his entire Empyrean form as it gave off a menacing glow of absolute power. It was infusion of hockey as an armor. This all happened in a matter of two seconds as everyone nearby was shielded. Saul began his attack, echoes of brilliance screech asterisk it was a primal cry of incredible scales it was so loud that it cracked the already broken glint island below the sunbird continued its cry of magnificence as a feeling of absolute terror swarmed the hearts of others the conquerors were safe even kaido who in the face of near death seemed to have unconsciously brought out his own infusion as he stood stronger than ever as for the rest other than the six capital vices who were not harmed in any way had a bad time the thousands of bodies who were unconscious woke up as their very souls were put aflame, such pain was not something just anyone could bear. Most shuddered for an instant then dropped dead, their souls destroyed, leaving them behind in a vegetative state. As for the stronger ones, Gabon, Silver Axe, Captain John, they mostly felt incredible pain as their lifespan was affected. Saul smiled in his bird form as the battles continued. Damien used his supreme Rokushiki to take the battle to the air. His Empyrean was now coated in infusion hockey as he collided with the Sunbird. With full mastery over Yushi combat arts and with his Empyrean form active, Damien could easily contend with the current Saul. Dash dash dash, the tip of the supreme weapon that was sharper than ever smashed upon Soul's talons. Boom, shockwaves were sent out as the two men pushed forth with great power. Clang, asterisk, 
The two were sent back ten some meters and shot forth once more. Saul used his domination in the air to deliver quick attacks upon the shielded Damien, while the latter twirled his mighty weapon in defense. Bam! Asterisk! Boom! Forty or so minutes passed as the battles went on for a stalemate. Saul's fruit supremacy was the only reason as to why Damien, someone reputed to fight leagues above himself, could not win. The overlord then roared out once more as great amounts of power swelled around him. Coming of pride, his body suddenly exploded as if a star had died, the heat released left the air cracked. Seconds passed and a screen appeared in Damien's eyes. Pride D. Soul's strength. Early stages of high tier Yonko right pointing arrow early stages of top tier Yonko. Blank. Note. Even though Saul can infinitely explode into a stronger version, it is restricted to how much power his body can actually hold. Chapter 103. At another battle, a few moments prior to Soul's strength boost, Big Mom held back two of the six capital vices. Ma Ma Mam Ma. Lin Lin used her Napoleon in full sword form as she clashed with Ignavi's twin swords. Thymos was using his staff from afar, bringing down a plethora of attacks. Die you overgrown hag, Gobbler roared out, he then opened up his ma air flooded in with great speeds. Boar burst, pwoo, an orb of condensed and ripping winds was sent out as it raced towards the rather loosely dressed pirate. Lin Lin then sent a flow of hockey to her slender arm as it shined a clean black, mama mash, she smashed her fist upon the coming attack, while she used powerful forms of emission that broke away the very soul of the attack and infusion tore it to shreds. Boom. She then suddenly leapt up into the sky as her near 29-foot frame brought down a fighting shadow. Ikoku Sovereignty. Big Mom then swung Napoleon in its longsword form with such force that she created a shockwave that destroyed everything in its path. OSCA. Who ate the swipe swipe fruit allowing him to swipe away certain physical qualities of an attack, jumped into action. Force swipe, momentum swipe, velocity swipe, acceleration swipe, jerk swipe, four streams of orange energy wrapped around the incoming slash as it slowed it down by a noticeable amount. Thymos in his black cloak narrowed his eyes. Smash, asterisk, he smashed the foot of his staff on the ground as the red crystal embedded upon it glowed. You shall not pass, great fire annihilation. The jewel burst out in a blazing red as crimson flames blew straight towards Big Mom's attack, weakening it further. Gobbler then jumped into the slash, his thick skin absorbed the remaining power. Lin Lin who landed on the ground just chuckled with her unique laugh. She looked down, her hand suddenly shot into the ground below her. Grab, she then snapped it back out, yet something was in her grasp. Why you, how did you detect me? It was Jello, a user of the Logia like. Jelly Jelly Fruit. Ma Ma Mam Ma, you can't get away. Her eyes then started to glow orange as black rings swirled around her pupils. An ominous navy blue atmosphere took over the surrounding area. No, Jello, get away from her. Ignavi yelled out as he grit his teeth in frustration. Jello was shaking as he saw the ginormous woman's eyes glaring at his very soul. A power voice that transcended certain laws broke out as Linlin spoke. Life, O.R., death. Jello was unable to utter a word as his very being was screaming in fear. Big Mom, a user of an ultimate class fruit was able to tap certain laws, in this case, the law of souls. She used something called soul pocus, which gave her the ability to set up a deal, a trade if you will. Two choices are given, life or X. In this case, Jello can choose life and stake his own lifespan in the trader, dead, where he would die instantly. Yet in his state of fear, no such choices were made. Big Mom waited a few seconds and gave out a menacing smile. And no, oh, the other commanders yelled from that back, yet Big Mom's conqueror's hockey was pushing them away. Give me sixty years, she moved her hand in a grabbing motion as Jello's mouth opened and wisps of his soul departed out. Jello's eyes widened out as life drained out, sixty years lost as he reached the end of his span. Thud, his body fell on the cold, broken land. As she killed Jello, Ignavi saw it from afar and grew angered, his eyes widened in pure rage. Yet a second later, they grew heavy and weak as they closed. Snore. He fell asleep. Deep snores rang out as the thymos turned his eyes at the sin of sloth. Big Mom saw it too, bourgeois Ignavi, ma ma mam ma. They call him the strongest of you six clowns, the sleeping demon. 
After her words, Ignavi's eyes burst open, fully white. His mouth scrunched up in a frightening angle, a wide smile. These asterisk. He then disappeared like the wind and flashed behind the evil spirit. Clang. Asterisk. His sword smashed upon Napoleon who shook. Whoosh. Asterisk. He disappeared once more and appeared elsewhere with impossible speeds. Big Mom narrowed her eyes at his power. Gobbler smirked with residual anger due to Jello's death. Ignavi has a sleeping disorder that has passed down the royal family. Of the bourgeois kingdom. A demon passed on through the airs. The. Hakuba. Dash dash dash. Elsewhere on Glint Island. Silver Axe was chopping down on some of the pirates that survived as his shiny axe cut them into pieces with little difficulty. He had just finished dealing with a pirate of 270 million berries as a giant shadow was cast upon him. F-W-O-O-O. He used Soru and flashed to the distance and saw the newcomer. He had a ginormous body. The lower half of an elephant and the upper body of a muscular man with golden armor. He held a long sword in his right hand with a helmet donned on his head. A long beard running down his chest. Andor, aka Silver Axe, recalled the name, Wang Ji, captain of the kingly pirates. Bounty of 670 million berries. You are from the rocks pirates. Wawa wawa, take my sword. Wang Ji then slashed down his giant sword upon the man donned in silver armor as the latter responded with his hockey clad axe. Clang. Asterisk. The sound of metal hitting metal broke out as the two weapons clashed. With Wang Ji's 16-foot-tall frame, the strength produced with this attack was enough to send tremors through the ground below. Yet Andor was used to larger enemies in his duels with Kaido. He used his mastery over the axe and directed the giant sword to the side. Skrr. Sparks went off as the sword slid from the axe and onto the ground, stuck. Andor twirled around his axe and slashed it down. Silver Road. An arc of silver energy slashed forth and onto Wang Ji's chest. Grr. The elephant zone user dug his four legs into the ground as blood seeped from his chest. Wawa wawa. Again. Dash dash dash. Another area elsewhere. Joho ho h o. So many knocked out pirates mean more treasure for me. John cackled to himself as he continued to rob the tens of thousands of fallen pirates. The loot was quite the haul as he looked like Santa Claus with a giant sack over his shoulders while he collected his goodies. You, how dare you rob my men? He had a zone body of a tiger, growling in anger. I am, curious, George of the Monkey Pirates. The man roaring at John was a pirate with a bounty of 199 million berries. J-O-H-O-H-O. -O -O. Die. Bang. Asterisk. A black bullet coated with hockey shot out as it rocketed to the monkey zone as he fell to the ground, dead. John reveled in greed as he continued to grab all forms of treasures he could put his hands on. Yet he stopped in his tracks, his eyes widened in panic. Thunk. Asterisk. His sack of gold fell with a thump. A shadow landed in front of him. You are. John muttered as he saw the infamous attire that caused most pirates to shake in fear. Dash dash. To Damien and Soul's clash. Pride D. Soul's strength. Middle stages of high tier Yonko right pointing arrow early stages of top tier Yonko. Saul had essentially imploded upon himself, his entire being was left in broken molecules. Yet they shook and trembled and amalgamated once more. From the ashes of his death, he is reborn. Screeth. Asterisk. The sunbird released its proud shrill. Flap flap. Saul was far stronger now. Having passed into the top tier of the Yonko stage, the same level as the current Roger and Garp. So ha ho ho, I did not expect you to push me so far, he said, floating in the air. Show me that tenacity of yours that brought down my rival. Damien eyed the overlord who had surpassed the current Shaki and Whitebeard and acted swiftly. Omega beams. The familiar red streaks shot out from the youth's eyes as they rocketed towards the sunbird. Saul simply flapped his wings in a forwards motion as the blazing winds coated with his solar flames demolished Damien's attack. Damien, in the short two seconds of the attack, had already flown 700 meters in the sky where the overlord floated another 200 meters away. Yushi in hand, challenging me in the sky, how foolish. Saul then widened his mouth as a small sun swirled in energy. Solar flare, a dense and powerful beam of golden red color shot out from the mouth it zoomed towards the flying Damien. Damien extended Yushi outwards as it converged with crimson energy. Red Sun. 
A scorching red ball of pulverizing energy danced around the Sin Incarnate as he shot it at Soul's attack. The thick beam of gold clashed with the boiling red sun. Boom! A grand explosion lit the skies as a mix of gold and red flooded the area, quite the spectacle from afar. Damien was now 80 meters above Saul as he executed another devastating move. With the embrace of gravity and the acceleration of his own, he popped the sound barrier as he committed the mythical creature. Yushi Combat Arts Tectonic Shift A raging meteor of crimson energy arced down from the sky as Damien plunged forth with enough power to cut through this very island. Saul felt the noticeable danger yet his pride caused him to chuckle in amusement. Hallowed Dawn Soul's two wings exploded with solar energy as they extended from their span of 9 meters each to nearly 20 meters. The wings then folded in front of the body of the sunbird, a powerful defense. Damien's Yushi trembled with impatience as it collided with the wall of flames with enough force to level mountains. B -o 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 M. The noise generated from the clash was enough to shake the destroyed ground nearly a kilometer below them. Yushi's crimson energy blended with Damien's emission and infusion was an incredible mix, yet in the face of top-tier Yonko with similar hockey levels, it simply wasn't enough. Boom! Another explosion sounded out as Yushi slowly lost its momentum, it desperately continued its charge yet the flames ravaged it all to naught. Not enough! Damien gritted his teeth. Saul wings then shot open like two gates as Yushi, alongside Damien, was shot away like a meteor with absurd speed. Crash! Asterisk! Damien was nailed down into Glint Island as he cracked the surface. This region of the island split in half as Yushi fell nearby. Flap flap, Saul landed on the ground, 30 meters away. Damien slowly got up from the ground, his skin was slightly bloodied yet all his bones held and his muscles were still strong. P2E asterisk, he spat out a wad of blood as he found his way to his feet. Saul did not wait, solar flare. Another sky-splitting beam of energy shot out from the bird's mouth as it raced parallel to the ground. Damien reached his hand out, Yushi flew towards it. He was about to attack back but something unexpected happened. The Starry Knight, a hockey-clad saber clashed upon the beam as silver sword energy sprang out with great momentum. Scree, asterisk, the beam of light paused in the air as a thin line could be seen in between. Boom, the attack fizzled out as Soul's solar flare was cut in half. Thud, a shadow landed on Damien's side, the shine of a powerful blade was apparent alongside it. Young man, will you let me join in as well? Damien raised an eyebrow in interest, you are, Rayleigh. The man wore circular glasses and had slicked back golden hair. A simple attire with his chest exposed. Rayleigh smiled at the younger pirate, you have grown a lot since our first encounter at Borealis Auction. Chapter 104, Damien and Rayleigh stood side by side. Saul remained 30 meters away, just slightly above the ground. Another one joins the fray, Saul said. You will all fall under my might. FWMMM. Asterisk. The sounds of metal echoed as Damien's body was armored up in Empyrean form once more as Rayleigh coated his saber and arms in it as well. The two were at nigh equal strength, with Rayleigh having a very slight edge over Damien. Yet with the two together, a top-tier Yonko enemy was not a problem. Boom. The ground blew up as the two pirates exploded from their positions and whizzed towards the sunbird. Clang. Asterisk. The talons of the overlord collided with Rayleigh's saber as Damien flashed 10 meters in the sky. Armageddon. Damien slammed his Yushi that swam with hockey onto Soul's giant torso, black lightning dancing all around. It was like a gong slammed with a large club. It sent powerful vibrations down the overlord. Boom. Saul gave out a loud screech as he held the two attacks. Wu. Asterisk. Saul was then shot back like a rocket as a streak of golden flames followed. The sunbird was momentarily stunned. Damien and Rayleigh capitalized immediately as they closed the distance between them and the enemy. Rayleigh raised his saber as it thundered with infusion and swiped downwards with great power. Damien spun Yushi around masterfully as he generated some momentum and drove it down in a diagonal slash at the overlord. Two power arcs of blade energy made of condensed air whittled onwards at the zone. Saul regained composure and struck back. Solar burst. Like a sun in the void of space, Sol's 20-meter long body shone with incredible luminosity as the ultimate flames blazed out. The attacks made by Rayleigh and Damien had been destroyed. Damien gestured to Rayleigh to buy him some time as he cooked up a thought, the latter nodded at the request. The Dark King launched forth, 
his trusty saber in hand. Rayleigh bent down slightly as his sword was held in both hands, the blade pointing out. He became a road of silver energy as his hockey shot forth in perfect synergy. The night sky, boom. While Rayleigh clashed with the overlord, Damien finished his move. R A A A A W W R. A loud roar erupted as a 50 meter tall dragon of black and red colors stood behind Damien. Flew. Asterisk. The air started to rumble as it whirled around the open maw of the dragon. A red glob of energy pulsed in its mouth as it roared out once more, a powerful tunnel of crimson destruction sent out. Damien unleashed his fruit power as his body became one with the attack, his Yushi trembled in power as it was fueled by the dragon. Extinction Calamity With the added momentum of the dragon blast and Damien's own strength, this attack would surely be quite powerful. FWOOOOO Asterisk The air exploded as the bright red beam continued. Rayleigh who was on the losing end against Saul, used the latter's flame attack to launch himself away from the fight. Damien, with an open shot at Saul, finished the attack. Boom, screeth, asterisk, Saul, in his sunbird form, cried out in pain as his body took the full force of Damien's attack. Crack, asterisk, ow, Saul groaned as three of his ribs cracked, his entire twenty meter size shot out into the horizon away. Damien landed on the ground, free of injuries as Rayleigh joined him by his side. That should leave a mark, the Dark King muttered as he saw the clouds of dust afar. Damien gave a small nod, yes, but it is not enough. Saul woke up to see his body stuck in the ground, his zone form had collapsed. He ground his teeth as his eyes grew dark. I, the Almighty, in such a state, how dare they? Screech, asterisk, a shrill cry thunder over the horizon as the ground shook from its intensity. Waves of water blew outwards from the nearby sea. A golden flame burst out as Saul went back in his zone form, 20 meters in size. Yet this time, something else happened. The flames started to swell around the bird once more as a familiar scene occurred once more. Coming of pride, the figure imploded on itself like before, entirely destroyed by the atoms. A scar on the world remained as slowly but surely, the pieces of flesh came back together to form something greater. The magnificent sunbird started to glow once more as it was reduced in size. The bright gold pieces were slowly sucked into a small orb that floated in the air. Vlu, asterisk, an ominous wind rained down as a new sight stood proud. It was a humanoid figure that glowed as bright as the sun in the sky. Two glass-like wings extended out of its back as a halo formed behind the being's back. Shing, a golden sword came into being that rested in the hands of the overlord. Damien saw it from afar and narrowed his eyes, not only did he explode himself and greatly increase his power but he also changed into the strongest form of a zone, the hybrid between the user and the animal. Saul stood five meters tall in his majestic hybrid form, power coursed through his veins. His golden irises carried a touch of supremacy. It is time to end this, he exclaimed, pride d, soul's strength, early stages of top tier Yonko right pointing arrow peak of Yonko. Dash 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 dash. At another battle, a few moments prior to Saul going hybrid, Shaki and Redfield have been clashing for three hours now. Redfield, a grand master of observation, was able to see the slightest of flaws in any movement and took advantage of them with quick and clean strikes. Shaki raised both his swords into the sky as they shined a sharp light. Golden Paradise. He spun into a golden tornado and flowed down towards the elegantly dressed pirate. Redfield smiled. FWWMM. His umbrella turned polearm shined black with hockey. Seeing the single concentration point of Shiki's attack, Redfield struck his polearm forwards. Clang. Asterisk. A loud bang resounded as both of the golden lion's swords were stopped in midair. Jihahaha. Shiki used his float float fruit to retreat, his hands quickly tapping the ground along the way. FWOOOOO. The air rumbled as large boulders of earth were raised above. Lion's threat. Imperial earth bind. The hundreds of flying boulders suddenly swirled around like a belt of rocks as they were shot forth mercilessly at the pirate below. Redfield exploded in a purple mist as he flashed through the flurry of attack, dodged most, cut a few while he inched closer to the man in the sky. Shaki responded by slashing tens of times in the sky, an equal amount of sword arcs were generated. Yet that was not all. These arcs of energy did not rage out, rather they floated in space. 
Shiki combined his powerful swordsmanship with his fruit power. Lion Majesty. Scattering Valley. It was a flurry of sword slashes that rained down with absolute dominance. Dash 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 dash. Nearby, Roger and Whitebeard laughed and clashed with great zeal. Oye, Newgate, Roger called out in midst of the battle. Is that kid going to be alright with Saul? Gurarara, Whitebeard laughed. The kid will be fine. You should be worried about Rayleigh. Wouldn't want your right hand man to die, now would you, Roger? Whitebeard twirled his giant weapon around in the air with little difficulty as streams of air currents followed behind. Boom. The powerful Murakumogiri slashed once more upon Roger's ace. W-A-H-A-H-A. -A -A. As if it were the cue, Roger's eye sharpened as his hockey blew around. The weather upon was now whirling around to his desire as he used the wind to his advantage. Whitebeard saw the change and attacked. Per up asterisk. A white bubble formed around the tip of his glaive as it pulsed with power. The earth-shaking weapon then descended with unseen power as Whitebeard's muscles popped in great strength. Roger was a master of hockey and swordsmanship. He used his supreme grade weapon with his overwhelming hockey and brought them together. F-W-O-O-O-O. He used an ascending diagonal slash, which buzzed around with such thick and pure infusion that it made a full-blown arc of black lightning in its wake. Boom. The tremor bubble popped with extreme bursts of power as the entire region was cracked like glass and shattered. Roger just gave out a crazy grin as his hockey flooded forth and pushed back the natural disaster. Dash 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 dash. Upon the raised platform, a lone figure sat in the center of the once raised platform, which had already collapsed from earthquakes and whatnot. Garug asterisk. The man inhaled his alcohol as if it were oxygen, empty gourds of sake could be seen nearby. Zahaha, I knew that fruit of his was as special as mine, Zebek muttered. His eyes were fixed at the scene three kilometers away. The great sin's eyes then glowed red. Shatter. The gourd in his hand smashed on the ground as Zebek growled in frustration, that Saul better be stronger than this otherwise I won't have anyone to play around with. Zebek's hunger for a duel after awakening his fruit was quite heavy, if Saul couldn't satiate his appetite then the world is damned. The rocks, Captain then smirked in interest though that Brad Damien always brings out something new, X-A-H-A-H-A. -A -A. Just like his old man. Dash 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 dash, how far can that power of yours go, Saul? Rayleigh questioned as he saw the overlord. The man smirked, my powers are infinite. You should just bow down like the hundreds of thousands around the world. Damien spoke up with a mocking tone, you mean the ridiculous legend about your powers that they fear. The sin incarnate laughed, your fruit may have some relations to the legendary, sun god Nika, but your morals are null, your motives, void, and your strength, fake and temporary. Nika has been worshipped since ancient times by slaves who believed that he would eventually come to free them from their suffering, Damien said. After the tyranny of the celestial dragons and the era of the world government, the figure of Nika has been idolized and treated like a savior. He then pointed out Yushi as a gesture, you, cried D. Saul are nothing but a fool destined to be forgotten. And just like your great kingdom, you will fall here, and now. Saul, a man of infinite pride, usually felt pity for others. Now, he felt a rage that fueled his very core. His body exploded with strength, touching the powers of those beyond Yonko, yet just a little way from it. Boom. The heat of the sun rushed out as Saul, like light, appeared right next to the two pirates. His sword slashed down and met Yushi. Clang. Asterisk. The twin blades of Yushi rumbled as the weight of tens of mountains crashed upon it. The pulverizing energy swam around, trying to hold it back. Yet to no avail. Boom. Damien's body was shot back at great speeds as he coughed volumes of blood, his body stressed with great force. Rayleigh coated himself with impressive hockey as he spun around in a silver spectacle, his saber collided with Saul. The same scene repeated as if it were a broken record. Rayleigh too was rocketed back, his saber shook with excess energy. Saul did not stop, his wings flapped as he flew up. Solar storm, small balls of golden red flames formed, thousands of them. Phew, vu, zing, asterisk. The wind howled at multiple frequencies as the attack raged onwards to the area where Damien and Rayleigh crashed upon. The sin incarnate had healed from his injuries, all but his stamina, that is. His eyes shone red as his future sight kicked in. The thousands of mini-suns showered down as if it rained from a thunderstorm. 
Damien and Rayleigh both struggled to shield themselves as the endless attacks continued. Saul flew at great speeds as he appeared before the two. The large golden halo that floated behind his back moved. It, spun, generated winds and rose into the sky. It was directly in between the sun above and Damien. Amaterasu's mirror. The halo acted like a magnifying glass as the sunbeams from above converged upon the body of the Sin incarnate, greatly concentrating their effect. Damien felt the raging heat as his Empyrean body had begun to melt, his hockey ravaged. Ah! Uh, he groaned out. The halo then spun incredibly fast, the sunbeams came together as they delivered another powerful attack. Boom! Damien was sent back kilometers away, pain rushed his very nerves as his body struggled to hold up, yet refused to fall apart. Rayleigh breathed heavily as the heat from the Overlord was getting to the point that the Dark King's body failed to hold up. Saul then raised his magnificent sword into the sky as it reflected the arcs of light in a divine flare. Los Helios. The sword exploded with strength as it arced down at Dark King. Rayleigh gritted his teeth as his hockey went into overdrive, his saber rushed with power. Clang. Asterisk. The weight of the sun seemed to fall upon Roger's right-hand man as his saber creaked in pain. S-O-H-O-H-O. -O. Die. The solar sword pushed Rayleigh's last line of defense as it slashed upon the open body of the Dark King. Ah. Uh, the pirate groaned as he, once again, rammed through the destroyed island. Dash dash dash. Cough cough. Under the huge volume of dust was a broken armored man. His mouth leaked with blood as his body was caved in a boulder. Pieces of armor fell off his body as drops of blood fell to the ground. Crack. His bones moved in painful bursts of action. They realigned themselves as the ripped muscles then regrew. Damien's eyes were slightly lost as he slowly rose from the ground. His beautiful attire slowly started to put itself back together, his Empyrean has collapsed. That hurt quite a bit, he mumbled. Click. He set his dislocated shoulder back into place as the muscle fibers regenerated swiftly. Crashed not far from the youth, was Rayleigh. Asterisk cough quite the monster he is. He mumbled as his beard shined red from the blood flowing down his lips. His clothes were ripped, his upper right torso had a deep scar that was caused by Soul's attack. Damien looked over with a serious expression, Rayleigh, might wanna have that eye of yours checked out. Rayleigh touched his right eye and as Damien said, there was a large vertical cut upon it. Yet his eyeball was miraculously intact. The dark laughed, hoo hi ha ha ha. I got quite lucky there, isn't that right, young man? Damien rolled his eyes, you seem quite cheery for a man that was shot a thousand meters by a flaming turkey. Rayleigh smiled as he wiped the blood off his face, I guess we're in the same boat then. Hum, let's agree not to let this boat sink any further, no, old man. Damien replied with a grin. Rayleigh froze with a flabbergasted expression, I'm only thirty-nine, young man, don't make me sound so grey. They both then looked into the distant lands, Saul slowly walked towards them, as if trying to seem menacing. If our captains remain so laid back then I'm afraid this will be rather difficult, Rayleigh chuckled. Damien then saw Rayleigh concentrate. FWWWM. The air flooded around his entire body as both arms and legs were covered in hockey, rather detailed lines extended over his chest and back, all the while it formed a black crown of sorts upon his forehead. Sparks of black lightning arced around him as he stood in majesty. A dark king, so to speak. Seeing Rayleigh ready, Damien prepared as well. Let's change things up a bit. Vwu. Yushi that was held in his grasp suddenly shook as Damien channeled his powers into it. The two clawed blades started to boil and warp into a fluid-like shape. The metal then flowed around as the wooden staff shifted in size, the blade was changing forms. Knowing that the vanquisher's brute strength and overwhelming power were not enough, Damien went towards a quick and swift attack form. Ravager configuration. The changed Yushi was a little calmer than before but just as powerful. The shape was that of a staff mixed with a sword. It had a wide, wooden grip that led to a beautifully designed guard. The metal was then connected to a thin yet incredibly sharp blade that was swimming with crimson energy. It was ten feet long. FWWWM asterisk. He then resumed Empyrean form as the hockey plated over his body-like armor. Yet that wasn't all. Damien had noticed both his weapon and body were simply too slow to keep up with Saul, a master of the sky. Thus Damien decided to change his approach. Boom. The cracked parts of his Empyrean release started to warp around as they extended out, 
the excess energy swam towards Damien's shoulder blades. F W O O O O. The air raged around his back as the crimson energy boiled out, it slowly took the shape of crackling, unstable wings. Comma. F W W W W W M. The full body armament suddenly shook as it started to grow and fully seal the gaps as it was coated all around. It then took a physical form due to Damien's near grand mastery over armament as his body was donned in black attire. The crimson wings then swam around with hockey as they too were covered in spiritual armor. The initial volatile form of Empyrean had shifted to a more calm yet frightening appearance with demonic horns protruding out from the head and crimson mist exuding from the pure red eyes. The wings took the shape of razor-sharp feathers as the entire region around him burst into flames from the sheer density of pulverizing energy that emanated from Damien. A hue of red fell all over the lands as the youth muttered. Second Descent Hadin Chapter 105 Second Descent Hadin Damien reveled in newfound power, his speed had certainly increased while his overall strength had ballooned as well. I will take it to the skies, I'll leave the ground to you, Rayleigh. A crackly voice resounded from the demonic Damien. Rayleigh was surely surprised by Damien's new look but not at all the same. Vu asterisk. Damien turned into a blur as he left a black and red trail from his absurd speed. His ravager configured Yushi ready as he neared the overlord. It was a simple attack that rammed straight into the Sol, the two weapons clashed. Increasing your speed will not aid you. Sol commented, unimpressed. Damien just smirked as he then disappeared from view and appeared 30 meters in the sky. He then spun Yushi around as it glinted a frightening red. Damien's eyes then sharpened as his body started to blur. He appeared 5 meters to the left, then once again to the right, above, below, beside, behind, in front, across, and so on. Hundreds of Damiens seemed to appear as he was moving so fast, it seemed he was in many places at once. One by one, the entirety of Sol's surroundings were covered by Damien in his Hadin form. Onslaught, and in a single instance, from every direction possible, Damien rained a flurry of attacks in a frenzy. Boom, clang bam, shing, it was a bombardment of crimson energy, slash from the left followed by a slice from the right then a swipe from behind and all around. Sol took every hit one by one, his eyes, his observation was unable to keep up with Damien's onslaught. Drops of blood flowed in the dusty lands of Glint Island as cracks formed under the overlord. Damien flashed into the sky once more, his wings creaking. Frenzy. The twin wings exploded out as each hockey-fused feather was as sharp as a sword. Whoosh. Voosh. Asterisk. The air was cleanly sliced as streaks of black flooded through the air, the feather blades rained down upon the unsuspecting pirate. Boom. Slam zip. Asterisk. Saul protected his head as the attacks flurried down, his eyes glowed in anger. Enig. Gluck. Saul was about to roar out but a saber suddenly found itself in his mouth as Rayleigh appeared before him. The Dark King plugged the overlord mouth as the bullet of silver sword energy rang out as it exploded in the man's esophagus. Vush asterisk. Damien then appeared directly above the angered overlord. Yushi. Upon his words, the supreme blade willingly left his hands and simply floated in the air on its own. Vu asterisk, Damien had coated it with his fruit powers as it formed a bubble around it. This allowed him full reign over the weapon without needing actual contact. Damien's fruit control had begun to enhance. He then popped the air and raced forwards. Clang. Rayleigh traded attacks as sparks showered down upon the sin of pride, infusion hockey mixed with every attack. Webs of cracks appeared all over the ground and nearby lands. Rayleigh was a machine. He attacked from the smallest of angles possible, he used Sol's momentum against him and redirected it with his saber. Sol kept up solely due to his powerful flames that caused the others to be wary of their strikes. Voosh, asterisk, dust lifted away as Damien had suddenly appeared in front of Sol's five-meter frame. He was dwarfed by the overlord yet his eyes carried a shine of great confidence. The latter raised his divine weapon and brought it upon Damien. However, clang, asterisk, Rayleigh's saber smashed onto Sol's sword, the two halted in midair. Damien's hands formed a triangle with his fingers and thumbs. Vu pulsing vibrations, a small, red pyramid-like object formed in the center, and many black patterns ran over it. It floated in Damien's palms. Sol's instincts went wild as his open left hand shot forth to intercept it. Boom. Ah. Uh. Yet just before having grabbed Damien, 
Yushi rushed from the skies and nailed into the palm of the overlord. Damien's eyes exuded a thick red mist as his voice called out. Atomic fracture. FWWWOOM. Asterisk. The dismantlement of matter is what occurred next. The crimson pyramid shined into a mix of red and black as it shot out with great momentum. Saul took the hit head on. Ow. He grunted as the golden flames near his chest started to break apart, being pulled and remodeled by the attack. Plop. Cubes of flesh fell out as the attack dug further in. Rayleigh saw the pained overlord. He jumped into the air with a sideways flip as his saber made short work of the stunned Saul. Swish swish swish. Saul's eyes widened as he felt pain. Three cuts formed across his body as Rayleigh's hockey-clad blade moved with silver arcs of energy. Two which aimed at his tendons that controlled the arms and another at the throat. Souls, by instinct, reached for his punctured arms. Thunk, asterisk. Yet in that brief second, Yushi had returned to Damien's hand as he mercilessly slashed it upon Soul's open arm. Thump. A golden limb fell to the ground. Blood oozed out. U-A-G-H-H. Saul roared out while his right hand covered his open stump. The blood from his throat dribbled out as the previous wound only stretched from the loud cry. In the face of such danger, Soul's great pride whirled in the form of the Hockey of Kings, as his body exploded in golden fire. Solar burst. A wave of absurd heat inferno out from the Overlord and towards Damien and Rayleigh. Soul's attacks were naturally faster than before in hybrid mode. Flap. Damien's black wings flapped as he raced out from the radius of Soul's attack. On the way out, Rayleigh jumped up as the Sin Incarnate grabbed the man in a hasty escape. Thud. The two landed 200 meters away and saw the absolutely demolished land. Per up asterisk. Magma bubbled out from the ground as it too was lit on fire from Soul's anger. Hockey rang out in fury. I think we made him angry, Rayleigh hummed as he slashed his sword down, the blood upon it cleaned off. Damien nodded with a smirk, right. The Sin Incarnate then exhaled heavily, Rayleigh, I say we go for one last big move, no. The Dark King in his hockey ed body gave out a soft chuckle, very well, young man. He then eyed the pissed off overlord and let's make it grand, shall we? Damien smirked as the two shot forth into the golden red inferno ahead, no ounce of fear in their eyes. Soul's body gave out a loud cry, his injuries healed from the flames, but that was not true for his left arm that was lost in the heat of battle. Zoom. Rayleigh turned into a silver burst of speed, he ran with such elegance that it seemed as if he skated over the land. His eyes flashed red as the future opened itself to him like a book. The coming storm. Boom. Soul's sword crashed upon the Dark King as the two went off at a reverse tug of war scenario, neither side bujid yet the former started to overpower the latter. Flap flap. Damien was in the sky, his body floated above. He then slammed both his palms together as his body swam with his fruit powers. Damien had also noticed that over the course of this nine-hour battle, his fruit control alongside his hockey had sharpened. Currents of crimson energy swarmed around the young man as torrents of wind echoed out. The Sin Incarnate was a sight to behold. Great amounts of energy bubbled and raced around his body. It slowly formed a giant creature. Rayleigh's attack had grown dry as he was pushed back. After having regained balance, he simply continued. The trust he put into Damien's attack was quite heavy. Saul opened his right palm towards the man. Solar Flare a burst of solar energy boomed out of the palm as it rocketed at the Dark King. Rayleigh saw the threat three seconds before it happened as he held his sword downwards with both hands. The blade cut into the ground as Rayleigh dug his feet in as well, his body churning with hockey in defense. Boom. The sun attack slammed onto his body. Rayleigh grunted as blood flowed out of his mouth, his body started to pick up speed as he was overwhelmed by the attack and sent flying out. The man glanced at the ginormous creature that had swelled around Damien and thought, the rest is up to you, young man. With Rayleigh out of the picture, Saul could now focus on Damien. I will reduce your flesh to dust with my flames. He yelled out. Damien had readied his attack, Rayleigh had bought him the time needed. Around the Sin Incarnate was a frightening sight. It was at least 50 meters large with a body of striking black, polished with impressive hockey. Large. Sharp quills decorated the creature alongside the demonic horns affixed to its head. It constantly sparked with black lightning as crimson arcs of energy whizzed around. Its white eyes glared at the overlord. Damien was inside the very center of this attack, 
his faint outline visible from afar as it pumped out all of his fruit reserves. A deafening roar erupted from the beast as its very presence rang the island as if it were a bell. The overlord rang with a war cry as his body shined brighter than the sun, the flames that burst out began to melt the atmosphere and even the clouds above. The night that slowly approached only seemed to be an omen. Sol's golden halo started to spin as it gathered the solar energy that remained and shot it at Damien. With that, Sol too started. His wings shot out and grew in size as his hybrid body fueled itself with power. His body was wrapped in golden red flames as it trembled in power. Solar Eclipse. He flapped in fury at the equally large beast in the sky. Damien met the attack with his own. His body shot forth at the coming creature of mythical stories, the beast that surrounded him gave out an ear-splitting roar in rebellion. Legacy of Demise. B -o 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 M. Under the broken skies and the rain of black lightning was a rather awe-inspiring scene. A phoenix-like creature having collided with an equally sized monster gave birth to quite the spectacle. The shockwaves released had the force to spawn thunderous waves and caused ear-piercing sounds to echo in the minds of the near. The simple output of Conqueror's Hockey was enough to put the habitants of Superbia to sleep while having left their streets in broken glass and true chaos. It was a mix and match of crimson black and golden red that continued for nearly three minutes before one side began to give way. With the masterful use of hockey and fruit powers, Damien slowly but surely repelled Sol's attack and drove his attack forwards. R-A-W-W-W-R. The beast continued its rage as the golden flames of infinite powers were broken down into near-atomic level pieces. Damien gritted his teeth once more, his arms and body were still affected by the heat of the flames from the sun, if not for Yushi that spearheaded the attack, he would have surely fallen by now. With a rebellious inner roar of hockey, the Sin Incarnate exploded with power as his weapon pierced its way through the phoenix. Soul's eyes widened in surprise as the tides turned. Boom! A secondary explosion resounded the region as the incredibly sharp blade of Yushi cut its way into the chest of the Overlord, the flesh ripped as the emission hockey traveled forth. Ah! Uh. Saul vomited volumes of blood as he was thrown away with great force, his body left behind a trail of golden sparks while the winds produced brought down tornadoes and disorder. Bam! Asterisk. It was like a mountain being dropped from the sky as the nine-foot-tall pirate was drilled into the ground. He simply didn't stop. His body was lost in the darkness of the depth. A deafening silence overtook the entire island as even the other Yonko-level battles seized for a moment, all eyes at the center of the landmass. Chapter 106. A few moments after Soul's fall, a few bodies were laid out. Gobbler the gluttony had died his guts slowly dribbling out of his open stomach as he was popped with Linlin's emission hockey. Thymo's broken staff was scattered on the ground as the man himself was nailed to the ground, his eyes lifeless as if his very soul had vanished. Cupid was knocked out, her breathing erratic. Fox D. OSCA was a mess. His body was cut in half by Napoleon, Big Mom's sword, while his brain matter was present nearby, his head shot mercilessly with Mars the flintlock belonging to the same woman. Clang. Asterisk. Winds blew wild as a heavy shockwave burst out nearby. Ma ma ma'am ma. Big mom laughed. You no longer interest me, sleeping demon. Ignavi, now Hakuba, was bloodied all over. His clothes were tattered, his right arm and an eye missing. Yet the smile glued to his face remained as his body moved on auto. Maybe if you were a rare species, I would keep you, the evil spirit cackled. But you are just a normal one with a special inborn power. You can die now, with her words stated, she blacked Napoleon in hockey as it shined in the moonlit night. Ikoku Sovereignty, the attack worthy to be dubbed as the Spear of Elbath, rang out in a powerful shockwave. Ignavi persisted for a while yet his body collapsed, the powerful attack ended his life as all of the six capital vices had died. Lin Lin hummed in slight fatigue, Hollis, carrying twins at this time gets slightly tiring. Her eyes were then drawn to the chaos at the center of the island. Dash 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 dash. Elsewhere at the same time. Ah. A primal yell infused in Conqueror's hockey bellowed out. Thwack. Clang. Slam. Asterisk. Heavy metallic sounds followed as purple lightning lit the dark surroundings. It was Kaido. His eyes glowed in anger. That damn Damien. His bounty will get even larger than mine with this. The beast's black club crashed upon equally powerful counters. Oye! You damn broody giant, can't you pay attention to your own fight? Gabon, 
his opponent for the past nine hours said in some annoyance. Kaido continued his flurry of attacks as he growled like an animal, Gabon, your bounty is higher than mine too. You piss me off. Boom. Dash 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 dash. Back to the center. Thud. A soft echo went off as Damien flew to the ground. Sizzle. His feather made of hockey and gas-like pulverizing energy had mostly burned away as the remaining slowly faded away. His Hadeen armor was chipped and broken, mist of red escaped as some blood, too, followed. Cough cough. Damien let out some grunts as his body regained some energy, his breath still heavy. Aches spread over his limbs and torso as the stress from the fight flowed in. His injuries may have healed but his stamina was nigh empty. Old bastard, how long will you stare in the crater for? Damien asked, seemingly to no one. Yet a reply shot back with great savagery. Zahaha, you surprised me again, brat. Zebek suddenly appeared a few meters from the Sin Incarnate, his wild red hair loosely tied, as usual, his clothes soaked in dried blood. The captain went on. You gave me a great fight to watch, Damien Brat. But now I'll take over as that flying chicken will be returning. Damien nodded, he has already exploded in strength a few times now. It may have infinitely but every burst overloads his body. He's already at the point of breaking down. Even without the system, Damien had figured out that Saul simply was not driven enough to unlock his fruit. He hadn't even awakened it yet. Zebek grinned, your eyes are quite sharp, Zahaha. I just hope Saul can entertain me even if it's the last thing he does. On cue, a loud rumble went off. V R O O O W W M. Asterisk. The ground shook incessantly as at the area of Saul's fall, a giant cloud of dust went off. A silhouette of a man was seen. Blood dripped everywhere, a missing limb plus a giant gash that cut deep enough to show the beating heart of the overlord. Yet even with that, his body constantly emitted heat and power a rather extreme amount of it. Even in the darkness of the night, the golden flames were apparent. Coming of infinite pride, an island-shaking boom went off as Saul seemed to have blown himself once more. From the ashes, I have risen. He roared out, even if I fall, it won't be with some upstart just barely having stepped into the new world. The heat released was far greater than before, the armor that remained on the broken Hadeen form sizzled and boiled away. Damien's skin reddened and melted off in a bronze liquid. His inner flesh was heated enough to cook eggs as it started to denature his very proteins. F W O O O O. Asterisk. Yet the feeling of having your skin melted off was nothing compared to the sickness of life that swirled nearby him. Around Zebek's body was a tornado of black smoke as it started to resemble the very color of death. Cries of souls echoed in Damien's mind as his eyes stared at his captain's powers. A screen popped up in the youth's mind. Pride D. Soul's strength. Peak of Yonko right pointing arrow well beyond Yonko. Sybil's voice then went off. Saul has fully exploded with enough power. For him to enter his final form. He has forcefully awakened himself. And until it runs out, he will be incredibly strong. Though this power comes at great expense, his body cannot handle it, he will die very soon. Damien nodded as the pain of hell itself was thrust upon him, yet his body healed as always, how long can he stay in this? No more than a day's time. Oye, kid, you aren't ready for this stage yet. Shoo away, maybe go and deal with those flies buzzing around us. Zebek's raspy voice broke Damien's train of thought. He saw his captain that brimmed with excitement as his hockey materialized around him, the very air withered away as empty space remained. Under the power of two awakened ultimate class fruits, well, let's just say Glint Island was no more. Damien flew to the edge of the island as he sat on the sandy beach to inspect some other things. The prophets were rather nice from that battle, he grinned. The Sin Incarnate then extended his left palm in front of himself. Vu tilde asterisk, a mellow noise went off. Damien gave out an uncontrollable smile as he saw the red cube that floated in his hand. V's. A soft howl escaped the hexahedron as it radiated in great power. It was cube-shaped with a crimson core that seemed to glow bright, it held Damien's power. Outside the cube was a black cage that seemed to hold the power in. VRRR asterisk. A grating noise then boomed as the red energy in the cube started to escape out in a red mist. The air particles were crushed into obsolete sizes, reduced to atomic levels. Burr. Yet the cage that kept the power started to fall apart the outer edges unable to sustain the power as it fizzled out in dismay. 
Though it seemed rather sad, Damien simply grinned as he felt his control over the pulverized pulverized fruit had increased and refined from the battle against Saul. Awakening. It's within my grasp. Dash 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 dash. Four hours later, it was around 5 a.m. Glint Island had started to shatter into pieces. Whitebeard and Roger continued their duel, earthquakes thrown around as sword slashes sharp enough to slice mountains collided. Shaki shaped his part of the island to his desire as the Red Count, Patrick Redfield matched with his strength. And one not to be forgotten was at the center. Zebek's death storms clashed with the flames of the sun fueled by the newly awakened powers Saul. It was the end of the world, for all it seemed was exactly that. The skies cried drops of blood as nearly 28,000 deaths had occurred in this very landmass. Damien sat at the edge of the island as he recovered some stamina, lost in thought. Saul will die here, the era of overlords will end with him. The eventful incident of God Valley is to happen in a mere 12 to 14 months. He recollected, I can invoke atomic level dismantling with Hadeen form but it isn't enough without it. I'd say I can surely match the current Newgate and Shaki. Damien concluded, thud, a quick rumble of the earth went off as a shadow landed near the Sin Incarnate. He hummed, Lin Lin, you sure took your time. Big Mom, still in her sexy attire of revealing clothes, let out a laugh. Ma ma ma'am ma, Damien, if I wasn't pregnant now I would push you down and take your seed right away. She claimed, the youth in question rolled his eyes, you depraved woman still living in your fantasies. With the number of brats you've popped out, I'm surprised if there isn't an entire Grand Canyon formed down there. Lin Lin grew furious, her body that was yearned by tens of thousands of men of all ages was called out as if she were a common whore. You damn kid, I'll rip your soul out. The woman was about to release her powers yet saw Damien's eyes flash red. The youth turned his gaze to the horizon, the darkness of the night slowly faded as dawn approached. So they couldn't wait any longer, eh? What is it? Lin Lin asked as she knew of Damien's superior observation. The young man stood up with a grin, Marines. Tens of thousands of them, he said. With some rather powerful presences in their midst. Dash 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 dash. Five kilometers away, all forces, advance. A loud voice mixed with great charisma went off. Swish. In the embrace of the rising sun, hundreds of ships set off. Fifteen battleships lined up in the back. Each held a thousand men. Smaller marine ships totaling nearly fifty in number were present as well. Vwu. Asterisk. The winds howled as a giant ship, nearly 1.5 times larger than the normal battleships came into view. The sails had a word printed on them. K-U-R-O-W-A-S-H-I. Bell clanging. Asterisk. Loud clangs of a bell echoed over the waters as the sun peeked up from the east. The admiral stood at the bow of the ship, other marines of even greater power on board as well. Kurawashi's voice went off, the pirates are in disarray. Raise your weapons and steal your hearts. A great battle is to come, one that shall be won with the justice that we bring. Oh, the marines roared out, their spirit fueled with the sense of duty. A sense of invincible power whirled in their hearts. With nearly 25,000 marines deployed and with the leadership of such powerful commanders, just who can stand in their way. Dash 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 dash. Back to the shore of Glint Island. Thirty minutes later, Damien, call them, Lin Lin said as she walked next to the youth, her body far taller. Yeah, yeah, the Sin Incarnate reached into his pocket and took out a device. It was a transponder snail that was kept in his inventory. The snail had its swag, a black long coat that resembled Damien's and matching crimson eyes as well. Peru, 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 Peru. The snail rang a few times. Kacha, it was picked up. Damien smirked as his eyes scanned the armada of marine ships that were just visible by the naked eye. Damien Chan, you finally called. Is everything all right? I'm fine. Shaki Nay, the youth smiled. You can send over the fleet now on the eastern shore, the marines are almost here. The woman responded with an affirmative tone, Yufufu, they will be right over. A few ominous seconds passed as the orange glow of dawn bathed the seas. Rumble. The air shook in trepidation as a great sight was to behold. Vru vu, wavu asterisk, tens to hundreds of grey portals opened all around the two pirates. The cool silence apart from the occasional wind was replaced with the uproar of thousands of voices. 
A plethora of ships then exited out from the portals, each made with ships that had been weathered in great battles headed by the toughest of men. We can finally fight, so many marines, come to me. Eyes, lungs, pancreas, so many snacks, so little time, je suis prêt à me batter. Venice, marines, for the gold, blah blah blah, I hear there are some hotties in the marine ranks. It was the Rocks Pirates Grand Fleet that made their flashy entry. 30,000 men upon nearly a hundred ships had arrived. Division 1 through 8 made up of the absolute worst pirates upon the seas. These were the men the demons of the New World would fear. Fwu asterisk. Damien and Linlin jumped from the shore to the ship that was at the center, surrounded by the other division. His very own suicidal Rambo. Shaki was present upon it as well as the other pirates throughout the armada gave out powerful cries. Damien Sama is here. The marines will cry in fear. Charlotte Linlin Sama, please step on me. Ellipsis. The men and the women all roared in joy as the two landed. Damien ignored the ruckus and walked to the very front. He saw the familiar woman that sat peacefully while the marines inched closer. Shaki Nay, we have nearly 5,000 more men than the marines but there is a bit of a problem, the youth uttered. Shaki puffed out a cloud of smoke as her eyes scanned the marines then approached from afar. I see them, Damien Chan, she replied. It won't be an easy fight. The Black Death was quite serious in her words, to which Damien concurred as he long sensed the powerhouses that led the marines. Damien zoomed into the men that stood upon the giant marine ship. He saw five men, each with rather distinct features. One with a large, black afro with simple facial hair. A serious man with a missing eye and shaved head. A younger man with messy silver hair and sharp, black clothes. Another with a metal arm and purple hair. And lastly, a marine with a robust body with a giant grin. The man cracked his knuckles with sounds that seemed to echo all the way to the shore. The ones at the helm of the marine ship that led the 25,000 strong fleet of marines were none other than Marine Admiral Sengoku, Admiral Basara, Admiral Kurawashi, Vice Admiral Zephyr and Vice Admiral Gar. Chapter 107 The war approached and both sides had been raring to go at each other. Lin Lin had jumped from the Division 4 ship to her third division that was to the far right of the Rocks Pirates fleet formation. The marines had Zephyr, Garp and the three admirals. Sengoku, Basara and Kurawashi. Loud bell clanging, over the blue seas was a powerful shockwave that echoed forth, it had originated from the ship with the five marine powerhouses on it. Kurawashi's ship, with black sails and wing-like additions to the side, the ship was quite the sight to behold. It had a golden frame coating the exterior with a soft white paint all over. A majestic ship, upon the raised bow of the ship was a giant, silver bell that carried a noble air. Bell clanging. The marines roared out in joy as their cries harmonized with the bell, almost like a heartbeat matching a metronome. Even a blind man could see it. The effects of the bell went far beyond making noise, but rather it had lit the spark in the hearts of the navy personnel. Shaki sighed as she saw the display. Damien used his hearing of the voice of all things and noticed that each time the bell rang, it sent out a wave of mental force, much like Conqueror's hockey, but to reinforce will, rather than to break it down the legendary ship that brought justice of the marines to the greatest of foes. Damien thought out loud, Shaki nodded with seriousness, a beacon of marine naval supremacy, the Ox Lloyd's warship that houses the fabled Ox Bell. The pirates were surprised as they saw the marines seemed to have the heart of endless courage. The bell rang endlessly, even with 5,000 more forces, Damien was unsure of victory, after all, the three admirals had come together with the likes of Garp and Zephyr. He also knew that to allow the marine morale to continue to skyrocket would be quite foolish. Step. Damien slowly walked forth. Step. Under the gazes of the nervous pirates, they saw the 5th Division commander walk to the edge of his ship. Step. He stopped a few inches before the fencing of the suicidal Rambo. Even with the ox bell that rang with sounds that hit the very soul of its listeners, all marines still turned their gazes to Damien. The sin incarnate's natural dread even hundreds of meters away churned constantly as it caused the younger marines to uncontrollably take a step back. Damien's crimson eyes slowly scanned every marine ship, the ones on board felt sweat trickle down their brows. He slightly squinted his eyes, and then, boom, like an eruption from a volcano, endless. Streams of conqueror's hockey exploded from the young pirate, it raged, held and whirled all over the naval region. 
A dark crimson hue fell upon the marines as the very clouds that decorated the skies seemed to be affected as well. Bees asterisk. Black lightning rained down as the winds picked up, setting quite the display. You useless fools. Damien's voice thundered out. Don't get all panicky because the marines have some shiny bell they ring to calm their recruits. They may hold the keys to paradise in a strong lock, but... Words laced with conqueror's hockey echoed in the minds of both the pirates and the marines. This is the new world. The pirates rule these seas. Some shiny bell that Kong has polished every month shouldn't break your spirits. Every sentence uttered caused thousands of pirates to reach for their weapons as their very being was lit with courage. Since they have come all the way here, Damien gave out a smirk. Let's give them a pirate's welcome and loot all their gold and treasure. The 30,000 strong force of pirates bellowed with newfound spirit as the very seas seemed to shake. Howls of greed, desire and simple anger flooded the minds of the rocks pirates as guns blazed and swords were unsheathed. Dash 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 dash. On the marine's side, thud slam bam. Countless Navy officers had begun to collapse from Damien's hockey as thousands were shaken to their very core, their wills trembled. Sengoku clicked his tongue in frustration, that boy, he's nothing but trouble. Biwahaha, a laugh broke out, he's got quite the fire, I like him. Garp cracked his knuckles, not overly worried about the shaken marines as the same thing happens before such fights, that is before his fist wakes them up. Kurawashi narrowed his eyes. Nearly 30,000 pirates are already down and out from the festival. We aim to take down the new world, only a few more problems remain. Saul and Zebek were busy with their duel, Newgate, Roger, Redfield, Shaki as well. This gave the marines a chance to up their catch by nearly twice, from 30,000 to 60,000 pirates if they take down the rocks, fleet now. Basara walked up, his hand reached his missing eye, it will not be easy with that boy at the helm. I will ensure his death today. Under the words of the enraged admiral, not many would speak up. But, wahahaha, Basara San, don't be so gloomy. It's a festival, you should enjoy it. Garp laughed out. The mountain was about to respond with anger towards his young colleague, however. T they've begun to move. Eyes drifted to the center as they saw pirates had commenced the battle. Fwu asterisk, Fwu asterisk. A cold wind picked up as hundreds of pirate ships started to move ahead with no intention of slowing down. All ships prepare to fire once they are in range. Sengoku ordered. Boom. A bright gold hue of hockey followed the admiral's words as the marines were woken from their reverie. Sengoku the Buddha, also known as the resourceful general, too, was a conqueror's hockey user. Such that his simple words somewhat fixed the damage dealt from Damien's earlier roar. The marine officers responded immediately, the ten vice admirals spread all over the marine ships led them. Click clank, thousands of cannons lowered down as they aimed upon the pirates that inched closer by the passing minute. Drip drop, beads of sweat fell off the younger officers as they gulped at the simple uproar that came from the rocks pirates. They deserved their title as the absolute most fearsome crew of the era. The ox bell continued to ring as the pirate ships had nearly entered the range of the cannons. Flutter. Garp suddenly threw his marine coat to the ground, a simple white shirt and navy blue pants remained. Crack, he, cracked his wrists and stretched his arms. Bring up my balls. Tires screeched as hundreds of racks rolled from the deck of the ship to the front. Tens of thousands of cannonballs rested upon them. Garp picked up a ball in each hand and reeled it back. Genkatsu, meteor, like a bullet, the cannonballs were launched out with enough speed to cut through a mountain, one by one. The attack did not end, as one second passed, nearly 100 balls had been thrown by the vice admiral. Boom, a ship had already collapsed from the volley of the barrage of cannonballs. Boom, bang, blam, asterisk, the tens of marine ships at the front of the formation fired as well as a rain of black projectiles overtook the horizon. Dash 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 dash. Damien saw the hail of balls as he let out a grin. The entire rock's fleet was the target. Instead of using a tactic or strategy, Damien simply commanded all ships to sail out. Why? The rock's crew did not believe in teamwork. It was a foreign concept to them. Some even tried to eat it. Most were more worried about being stabbed in the back rather than being hit by a meteor-like cannonball. Damien Chan, try not to lose too many ships. 
The shipbuilders at Miriam Island have been threatened one too many times by Shaki and Zebek to make more ships and can't handle more encouragement. Shaki said from the back. The youth just chuckled knowing that such a thought would be nearly impossible to fulfill. Fire. The hundreds of pirate ships may be in the range of the marines, but the same was true the other way around. Thousands of cannonballs rocketed through the air as they flew to opposite sides. One to three ships fell apart every minute from both sides. Indra, all the rest to you, Damien said out loud as his eyes sharpened with battle spirit. Fu asterisk, like the flash of light, a shadow appeared behind Damien. You can leave it to me, Commander, Indra said in his usual stoic voice. His long dark brown hair flowed elegantly in the wind. Damien cracked his neck as a smile was etched on his face. A screen lit up in his mind. God of war, inherent skill, for every enemy you defeat, you gain some stamina in return. The youth had his stamina drained and was impatient to gain it back. Having fought a foe at the peak of Yonko was quite grueling, even with the aid of the Dark King. Shaki hummed from the side, you're joining in this early. The young man in question just nodded, I'll be back in a flash. With that, he disappeared from the ship. Shaki sighed as her gun shot out three rounds, killing thirty marine officers in a split second. Dash 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 dash. The current formation had five warships at the front with fifty standard ships in the center and another eleven warships at the back. S something is coming. A voice yelled out from the leftmost marine warship, it was a man of Commodore rank. What is it? A rear admiral asked as he saw Ued next to the man. The man who had alerted the rear admiral was a user of the sense sense fruit that allowed him to sense attacks that had yet to occur. The rear admiral was about to speak but then, splash, a spray of crimson liquid showered onto the marine commodore as he saw his superior officer's head being liberated from his neck as the blood spurted out like a fountain. Under the horrified eyes of the 1,000 marines on board, Damien had appeared. Yushi of the Supreme Blades was bathed in blood as its user felt some energy return. Ravager configuration in use. Click. Bang. Asterisk. Hundreds of shots then followed as the marines retaliated. They may be fearful but they had enough experience not to freeze in this situation. Clatter. Yet, much to their dismay, the bullets simply fell to the ground having barely even touched the attack but lost all momentum. In the process, and not even a scratch, a man muttered as he took an audible gulp. Time for a quick massacre. Vwu asterisk. Using his flight Damien shot into the sky as his weapon was raised above him. And like a bullet, he threw it like a spear as it slammed upon the marine warship, effectively cutting it in half. Damien's eyes then glowed red as two beams of red energy blasted out. Boom. Five standard marine ships 30 or so meters away were destroyed as pieces of wood rained down upon the blood-soaked sea to the credit of the Omega Beams. Damien then extended both hands out to his left and right while he floated in the sky. Utter decimation. A wide stream of pulverizing energy shredded the air that surrounded it. The attack zoomed through the air as it met a marine warship. B -O 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 -M. The sails cracked, the floorboard snapped and the very frame of the ship glowed red. Red lines spanned all over. Bling. Sounds of pixelation went off as the behemoth of a ship was reduced to near atomic levels. Thump. Yushi returned to Damien's hand as it vibrated in delight. Fire. A yell broke out. It was a marine vice admiral who gestured to the marines to fire upon the Damien. Bang. Asterisk. Boom. Asterisk. Vwoom. Asterisk. Tens of cannon mounted upon the marine ships went off as the balls zoomed through the air. Damien hummed as a little grin formed on his visage. B -o, 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 o M. A chained explosion went off in the air as nearly 100 cannonballs exploded, having reached the man in the sky. Great volumes of dust floated around from the shrapnel. D did we get. An optimistic voice broke out. A few thousand eyes glared at the skies that were slowly cleared of the dust. Gulp. A man gulped as he saw two crimson orbs in the loose cloud of dust that seemed to see his very thoughts. Damien's untouched body showed itself to the world, his regal attire reformed as the lack of physical injury left a deep impression on the marines. R ridiculous, that had enough power to take down a battleship of a thousand pirates. Just what kind of endurance is that? They then heard a voice. Yushi Combat Arts, the weapon in Damien's hand pulsed out visible red shockwaves as it shook in the air, energy gathered around it. The youth grasped the Ravager in both hands as the blade was raised diagonal to his body. Broken world. 
In an arc of endless power, the supreme weapon slashed down with infinite momentum as a bubble of emission hockey followed in pursuit. It was brighter than the sun as it overpowered the surroundings, eyes drawn towards it. F W O O O O. Asterisk. High pitched cries of the air screamed as the crimson slash found its way upon three of the warships at the back of the formation. Cries of thousands of men burst out as every ship was thinly sliced in a diagonal half, this caused them to entirely collapse upon themselves. Yet before it could fully sink, every ship glowed an eerily red before they disappeared from the naked eye. Reduced seemingly to dust, while Damien went off on a rampage, Lin Lin was doing the same thing. She used Mars to shoot out a plethora of wind-like attacks as they shredded the ships in their wake. Shaki sniped from afar with a single hand, the other busy with a cigar. Dash dash dash, twenty minutes later, already thousands had fallen from both sides. Charlotte Linlin aka the evil spirit used her flintlock homie to create winds that allowed her to float in the air. Her children and other minions attacked alongside her. Katakori's mochi mochi fruit rained down ranged attacks while Perispero brought down candy arrows upon the marines. The others were busy with the other ships while a few warships attacked in response. She was about to shoot another bullet, however. Bam! A black metallic fist smashed upon her desirable body, the warm bubble of emission hockey transferred into her frame. Ah! Uh, a stream of blood escaped the woman's mouth as she felt her entire body shake like a drum. She let out a growl, sea stone. A shadow floated in the air. The man eyed the female pirate who had crashed upon a smaller pirate ship. Purple hair, stoic face, muscular body, a metal arm that glistened with hockey. Katakori grew somber and he muttered, Vice Admiral Zephyr. He was defeated by Sensei during the Amethyst Island crisis and lost an arm. Zephyr, with his seastone arm, was a beacon of power, having taken down hundreds of pirate crews as he showed the capability of a non-fruit wielder to the world. Ha! Ah, that Damien cut off your arm so you came to me instead. Are you saying that I am an easier opponent than him? Lin Lin roared out in indignity. Her lacy bikini somehow held her massive jugs that heaved in anger. Zephyr was unfazed, you come to a battle with children in your womb. Such a woman doesn't deserve to be a mother let alone to be left free. He then rushed out as his metal arm clashed with the unsheathed Napoleon. Boom. Dash 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 dash. As for Damien, he had just destroyed another eight ships and was about to aim at another. He was thirty meters in the air, ready to bring down an attack, however. His eyes lit up in a red glow as the future was laid out in his mind. And then, clang, asterisk, Yushi was raised by reflex to guard Damien's chest and met an attack. Waves of shock burst out from the exchange as waves of water were generated in the process. Damien looked ahead and saw that his supreme blade struggled to hold under a black fist. Boom, the air exploded as Damien's body was launched back with great momentum as it skidded through the air. The youth's chest rang with force as his bones slightly shook, emission hockey danced within. Yet suddenly, pop, the great force of the punch seemingly ceased as Damien returned to flight, his weapon vibrated in anger. Wahahaha, that weapon of yours is quite sturdy, Damien boy. The man laughed with little care. Damien gave out a grin. Garp, the vice admiral then raised a black fist and blew on it and polished it with his shirt. That Brad Dragon has been shaken up with your words for years now. Garp said with some irritation. Let me give you what I gave him. My signature. Fist of Love. Chapter 108. That Brad Dragon has been shaken up with your words for years now. Garp said with some irritation. Let me give you what I gave him. My signature. Fist of Love. Dash 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 dash. Damien's eyes narrowed in seriousness. The boy had fought many enemies now. He clashed with two overlords, dueled the likes of Whitebeard and Shaki, defeated Big Mom and even took down an admiral. Yet in all these fights, he had never fought a man like Garp. The reason was what Garp did not have, fruit powers. Damien knows how to fight even awakened fruit users, but never has he ever equally clashed with a non-fruit user of this level. It was something he had been waiting for. Dash 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 dash. Biwahaha. Garp laughed out. He wore an open white shirt and navy blue trousers while fashioning a goatee. Crack crack. The vice admiral cracked his hockey-infused knuckles as the sound echoed in the atmosphere, rather loudly. He gave out his usual grin. Pop. 
The air popped like a balloon as Garp used Geppo to launch himself towards Damien who was roughly 150 meters. The Marine had little strategy involved in his charge, just a simply rocket-like rush with his right hand pulled back, ready to crumble everything. Damien changed his Yushi into a more aggressive form, the Vanquisher. Vwoo. The air vibrated as the newly configured weapon seemed rather annoyed by being sent back from before. Damien twirled Yushi in a red circle as he too blasted on ahead. Tornadoes of red energy swirled around the youth as his body built up huge amounts of momentum. Crimson Comet. His entire attire was now a flash of red that went fast enough to leave streaks of broken air behind. Garp saw the oncoming Damien and gave out a grin of pure glee. A red bubble was coated around his right fist as it met the red meteor. Boom. A flare of crimson energy arced all over the seas as shockwaves with enough power to push the nearby marine ships tens of meters away. F W O O O O. Asterisk. Torrents of air currents were generated as the Sin Incarnate and the Fist pushed forth. Damien's attack was naturally infused with Conqueror's hockey though they seemed to be countered. Garp let out a green aura that had a wild aspect to it. It was like Kaido, the very battle spirit of a fighter. It was an extension of their will and materialized outside their bodies. This armament is ridiculous. He uses his fist to push back supreme grade weapons like it's not the hardest steel in the world. Damien thought in his head, a smile followed on his face. Garp gave out a chuckle as well. Boom. A secondary explosion went off as the pirate and the shot back 20 or so meters. Both uninjured. That weapon is as hard as Roger's sword. It makes for a nice nail clipper. Garp joked with little seriousness. All the while a screen appeared in Damien's eyes. Dash dash. Monkey D. Garp. Age. 39. Height. 9 feet 5. Devil fruit. None. Skills. Incredible inborn strength. Exceptional armament hockey. Great spirit. Fearless. Hockey. Mastered observation. Grand mastery. 3. For armament. Strayed conquerors hockey. Strength. Middle stages of top tier Yonko. Dash dash. Damien was intrigued after seeing Garp stats. This was his first encounter with a Grand Master of Armament. Something even he has yet to attain. Take this fist of love. Garp roared out, his fist coated in absurdly thick hockey. Empyrean. Damien readied Yushi once more as his body was then covered in plates of armor with crimson mist that exuded out. Boom. Clang. Bam. Asterisk. Under the eyes of the Marines, the two men went off at great speeds with collisions that occurred every few instances. Streaks of red and green flashed throughout like a fanfare as the fight continued. Dash 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 dash. Ox Liod's warship, Sengoku stood as firm as a mountain. His pure white marine coat draped over his shoulders with his seagull hat mounted on his head. A black snail in his hand. Basara was there as well, the one-eyed admiral. Sengoku looked around and saw the chaos. On one side was Big Mom against Zephyr. The two had already led to many deaths on both sides from their fight. Lin Lin used her ultimate class fruit as her versatile attacks rained down on the black arm. The other side had pockets of air that exploded at constant intervals, booms of clashes went off as Damien's Yushi added with Garp's armament would release great amounts of shockwaves. And of course, in the middle was a pure mosh pit of marines and pirates. Bodies swam lifelessly with rubble and broken ships every here and there. The cries of tens of thousands of men in fights and injuries were the only thing that seemed to persist. Sengoku raised his black snail as it was connected to the ones with the higher-ranked marines in the war. We will begin the plan, all troops, being a slow retreat. He ordered. Upon his words, visibly, the functional marine ships started to immediately pull back, cannon stills went off in order to mask their moves. Dot dot dot. Ten minutes passed as the marines had put a gap of at least 300 meters in between the ships. A naval battle ensued. Now, Basara San, the admiral, exchanged a nod to his fellow marine as he slowly rose his hands. Basara's movement was quick and swift, yet the result was felt all over the sea. Rumble. The very sea that was bathed in fire and war trembled as ripples of water slowly grew in intensity. The fight paused for a second as the pirates saw what was to come. Pit of despair. Basara's deep voice echoed all over the region as a huge shadow engulfed the ships on the outer edges of the naval battle. Rocks fell down as a giant structure rose all around the battlefield. It was a mountain that seemed like the entire war zone. 
rumble. The seas shook continuously as the circular dome grew and grew. 500 meters. This is how high the range had become. Basara then made a few more hand gestures. Justice Arena. The seas shook as well as the ships as the water below was slowly displaced. Crack. Wood cracked on the hull of many pirate ships as they started to lift up. Basara molded the earth to make a full landmass. It stretched all over the battlefield. Not only that, on the pirate half of the arena, he used jaggedy earth as it scarred the ships while on the marine side, it was as smooth as a newborn's rear. By now, a multi-kilometer wide land had been erected that encompassed the war zone and beyond. Seek shelter. Sengoku's voice was heard from the snails in the hands of vice and rear admirals. Basara then brought both arms up as the world was molded by him. Beyond the circular mountain around the battlefield were even more pieces of earth that swirled around. F W O O O O. Asterisk. The air screamed in agony as the large boulders slowly floated to the skies above the pirate ships. They materialized into even shapes and seemed to encase the entire sky zone. Quote dot 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 quote. A deafening silence took over as the forces eyed the rocks above. They were around three meters wide with a sharpened edge, floating with little movement. Tens of thousands of them. Showered justice. Under the command of Basara, slowly but surely, all the boulders in the sky fell with the embrace of gravity. Picking up speed, generating loud whirls as they neared their objective. The pirates gulped as they saw the attacks rain down. Dash 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 dash. The suicidal Rambo. Shaki clicked her tongue as she saw the free falling from around 500 meters in the sky. At this rate, the boulders would crash down with around 375 kilometers per hour speeds. Admiral Sengoku, also known as the resourceful general, Shaki muttered. Renowned for his tactical and strategic genius by marines and pirates alike. Open fire. Shaki's eyes drifted to the side as she saw the navy fire endless cannons on her fleet. An exponential amount of bullets also went off as the marines unloaded their rifles. With the incoming boulders and endless gunfire, this was surely problematic. Shaki used her roulette roulette fruit and changed the rounds in her pistol. Pew pew pew. Tens of bullets went off as they hit the broken ships nearby. A weird scene ensued as the small bullets sucked up all the rubble into a portal. By now, the rocks pirates had regained their wills and opened fire at the boulders above in desperation to somewhat lessen the range of attacks. Charging Radon, Inferno Storm, Paper Tornado, Devil's Parade, The Great Depression, Infernal Venom, Mace of Atlas, Twin Cry, One Sword Style, Dance of the White. Damien's division mates continued with their attacks that wiped out great amounts of the boulders. Shaki then aimed her pistol. Bang. Asterisk. A single bullet flew out as it split apart into 50 pieces. F W O O O. Air was displaced as the giant rubble pieces that were shot at recently appeared out of nowhere in the sky, acting as a shield. Crash. Asterisk. All the, while thousands of bullets shot upwards mixed in with many sword attacks and whatnot as the pirates pushed back. Woo asterisk. The air howled as the marines' attacks neared as well. Thousands of cannonballs exploded on the ships as many pirates were thrown into the air, their bodies popped from the attacks. Boom. Rumble. The boulders that were reduced to about a fifteenth of their original count crashed down. Ah. Oh. My leg. Ah. Eeyah. Meat paste splashed around as the blood of thousands of pirates leaked out. Broken bones and shattered bodies everywhere. Howls and moans of injured men resounded throughout the seas as only a mess of red was left behind. The hundreds some ships were cracked and destroyed with only forty still functional. The rocks pirates fleet had taken great amounts of damage. From thirty thousand pirates, they were reduced to nearly sixteen thousand five hundred in the matter of a few hours. The marines were still around nineteen thousand strong. Shaking earth, with the wide platform raised by Basara below, the marines charged forth, their morale sky high. Meet their attacks, Indra's stern voice bellowed out as the pirates. The pirates that survived showed no fear. They just growled in anger as they jumped off the ships with little care, weapons raised. They were practically animals. Like two tides, the armies clashed. Bodies swam together as tens of thousands of men began a melee on slaughter. Roar. SSS's tilde. R-A-A-A-W-R. Three ancient zones appeared. Bozo as Apache Cephalosaurus. Obazoba as a Titanoboa and Bazoon as the new user of the Ankylosaurus. Yet their appearance was met by another force. Clang. Asterisk. 
A loud metallic sound broke off as each ancient zone was attacked. Marine capes floated around as powerful presences stood tall. Six rear admirals. Pascal and Heath were a team of fire and alcohol that mixed rather well but were too, stopped by more marines. Pablo and the other division mates went off against their own foes. Indra walked ahead to the bow of the ship. Shaki Sama, I will go as well. The woman nodded as she took down twenty or so marines with her gun. Indra blasted ahead in incredible speed, even beyond Damien's masterful Rokushiki. He was like a bullet that zoomed around. Slash splatter splash, a company of marines were shocked as they were picked off one by one with a streak of black. Blood rained down as they all fell one by one. The secret to Indra's new speed was a fruit given to him by Damien, the swift swift fruit. He zipped ahead as hundreds of marines fell in his wake, clean and merciless slashes accompanied the pirate. Streaks of afterimages were left behind as he continued his slaughter. However, clang, asterisk, his sword was suddenly met to a halt with a large broadsword. Indra's black eyes remained bright as he muttered, Vice Admiral, dash 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 dash, in the skies, boom, Damien in his Empyrean form was bombarded with Garp's powerful fists as their fight continued. It had been two hours since their fight began. The pirate sighed as he saw his losing crewmates, not that he cared for them, except for a select few that is. Sengoku-san is as ruthless as always, Damien said. Garp chuckled, hee hee, Sengoku may be a golden statue but his mind is only a little sharper than mine. Damien's Yushi slammed on Garp's fist. Garp talked in between their collisions, you grew a lot from that little fledgling at Moor Island to now. Kong-san's hair turned gray from your mess, Biwahaha. Damien slashed down as his attack was met with two fists. Boom. It's only the beginning. Garp grinned. Even with you and that giant cake lover, you stand no chance right now. Newgate. Shaki and Zebek are busy with their own fights. Bam. A black punch drilled into Damien's stomach from a thin opening as he felt his ribs shake and his breath lost. Damien was thrown 15 meters back before he regained balance. That usually would be enough to break a mountain. Garp muttered as he looked at his fist in confusion. Perhaps it was due to him having missed his daily dose of rice crackers. Damien grinned as a stream of blood flowed down his lips. Garp wasn't wrong in his early statement. With the pirates with little space to escape and under the attack of Basara and countless marines, their fall seemed inevitable. Kurawashi also seemed as if he was about to get involved and let's not forget Sengoku who had yet to even use his devil fruit. Even with this, Damien had a few other thoughts in mind. His eyes glowed red in observation as he saw the coming future. It's about damn time. His gaze drifted to the side as Garp did so as well. A black shadow could be seen from afar with many smaller ones around it. Garp's jaw dropped. Boom. Rumble. Shock spread in the eyes of the marines and even the three admirals as they looked to the far left of the circular mountain range. A segment of the 500-meter wall seemed to have taken a huge amount of damage as cracks spread all over it. Giant pieces of rocks slid down the slope as the attacked section shattered apart. A 400x 500-meter fragment of the mountain had collapsed into rubble as the tens of shadows neared. Damien smiled as he looked at Garp, five marine powerhouses are quite powerful, but that's the thing, we aren't your only enemy. The ten shadows cleared as if they were ships. Flags rained proud as the many foresails had words printed on them. First, a few new world pirate crews. I-F-R-I-T. G-O-O-S-E. M-R. N-O-I-R. B-A-K-K-I-N-S. And a few big names. W-A-N-G-Z-H-I. G-O-L-D. R-O-G-E-R. R-O-C-K-S. Six pirate crews alongside the Oro Jackson and the Titanic. The latter was around 230 meters tall as it eclipsed the rest. The newly arrived forces included around 800 or so new world pirates alongside the Oro Jackson's 50 or so battle-hardened Roger pirates. A few powerful presences could be picked up as they were big names over the new world. On one of the minor ships that sailed with an elephant figurehead stood an elephantine humanoid with a giant sword. It was, the Crisis, Wang Ji, bounty of, 670 million. On the Titanic stood a few men side by side, a man who was drowned in the stench of sake, with a bounty of 469,666,000, pirate bandit, Captain John. Beside him was a large, armored pirate, blinding light, silver axe, bounty of 
830 million. Boom. A loud shock spread over the Titanic as a black club fell upon its surface, the wielder was rather tall. Kaido. The beast, bounty of 1,161,100,000. He gave an audible growl as he eyed another man that stood upon the nearby Oro Jackson. It was, Twin Axe, Scopper Gabon, bounty of 1,270,550,000. And at the helm of the ship was a man with slicked back golden and circular glasses that shined light which made it impossible to see his eyes. He had a vertical scar across the left eye. One seemed rather fresh, he had a bounty of 2,408,600,000 on his head. It was none other than the Dark King, Silver's Rayleigh. The numbers had changed and yet the war only grew more turbulent. Chapter 109, Aren't they supposed to be enemies? Sengoku exclaimed as he saw the newly arrived criminals. Basara grimaced, scum tend to come together, and they can die together too. Dash dash dash. Garku floated in the air with his Rokushiki could only give out a grin. Biwahaha, you caught us off guard again, Damian boy. He raised his right fist as it visibly shook. But they can't stop me from teaching you a proper lesson. FWMMMM. Asterisk. A night black color appeared around it as the fist was coated in armament. Damian eyed the marine in intrigue. Per up asterisk. A red bubble then swam out of the man's chest as it started to cover his entire body. It was a bright red bubble that seemed to wrap around Garp's entire 9 feet 5 frame with boundless power. Hee hee. The man gave out a grin in glee as his right arm was reeled back. Every movement caused the air around Garp to bend and whirl around him, the air particles shook endlessly. Boom. He then shot forth with his dominant arm pulled back in a prepped fashion as broken skies were left behind in his advent. Damien who floated 15 meters away in his Empyrean form had his eyes widened. Yushi, which boiled in a mix of red and black shuddered as its wielder flooded it with enormous power. Damien brought his weapon down in a flawless diagonal that had the power to slice mountains. Broken world. A streak of red followed the blade as it cut the very air into pieces. Garp's single fist shot forth as torrents of air currents were left in turmoil. The crimson bubble around the man flooded towards the fist in a show of great mastery. Sparks of hockey went off as the fist looked like an immovable mountain. Boom, Yushi, that slashed down, had some defensive aspect as well. Damien had sent great amounts of his fruit powers upon the very blades of Yushi. This caused a black space around it which pummeled the very air into powder. The space around the weapon was utter void. This should mean no sound waves were able to pass through, yet that was not the case. Ah, uh, m my ears, it hurts. Hundreds of men near the clash covered their ears as a deafening cry of literal destruction echoed in their eardrums. It drilled through and even left a few with mushed brains as the vibrations were mind-numbing. Garp's fist shook in the sky as it pushed towards the supreme sword that sent out the screeching sounds. Cracks formed around the clash as both sides raged out. Even the admirals and the pirates glared at the collision. Shaki gave a worried glance as she saw Damien. Waves of energy ruptured everything nearby as the two forces seemed to reach a tipping point. Damien was surprised as he saw the seemingly unstoppable fist start to inch forwards as Yushi edged back. Creak. His eyes widened as he felt his weapon seem to bend by a few degrees. Something he thought was impossible. His mind clicked. This is the grand mastery of armament hockey. Take this fist of love. Garp gave out a roar as his biceps and forearm popped in great power as the veins too became visible. The unstoppable fist pushed ahead as Yushi was blasted out of the Yu's grip as it shot at a random pirate ship and caused it to instantly sink. Damien flooded his chest with as much as hockey as he could muster as he felt the weight of a thousand mountains smashed upon his person. His ribs audibly cracked as the fist was drilled forth, causing blood to shoot out of his mouth. Fu asterisk, like a shooting star of spiraling red, the young man was sent flying through the air as a crimson streak followed his body. Boom. Damien was nailed into the mountainous wall as his body was left tens of meters deep in the thick rock. Nailing and drilling his way through. The marines were silent as they saw the scene, and then. Ow. Amazing. That's the invincible Garp San I know. So handsome. The fist that can subdue all is on our side. It was a morale booster that fully countered the arrival of the fresh pirates. Grand applause ensued as the marines felt reinvigorated. Their minds are clear. Garp clicked his tongue with a small smile of disbelief. 
Don't be too cheery now, that kid. Has some thick skin. The thousands of marines looked at what the vice admiral glared at. It was the shadowed cave-like hole that was left behind in the cracked mountain. Gulp. Tens of gulps went off as they saw a pair of crimson eyes that shined through the darkness of the cave that was at least ten meters into the structure. The two eyes carried a hint of excitement and glowed with confidence. They seemed to get closer as. Creak. A single hand shot out of the shadow, causing some rumbling. Grip. The fingers dug into the mountain, leaving visible cracks all over that caused giant boulders to roll down. A few steps went off as a humanoid body walked out of the cave. Black armor-like pieces fell off the body as human skin was visible. Damien's rather handsome face appeared with a wide grin, even with the gaping hole in his upper chest. The injury caused a few of the younger marines to puke. Plop. Pieces of black and red flesh fell off as Damien's very ribs were observable. Those with good eyesight could see the cracks in the bones. Even Garp San can't take him down. Is he some kind of monster? Can he not die? Yet there was a more glaring problem. His bones, they're black. I is that hockey. Don't joke around. It's not possible to imbue armament hockey inside the body. A veteran said in denial. Garp's mouth widened comically as he saw the pristine black bones that were seen in all their glory. Zephyr, who subconsciously grabbed his metal arm, was shaken as well. Hockey in the bones, it's supposed to be a fictional tale. Rayleigh laughed as he saw his younger friend enemy with another ridiculous power. All the while Kaido grounded his teeth in annoyance. The commander has some absurd means of strength, Indra mumbled. Shaki just shook her head with a sigh of relief, that boy always makes me worry. Damien didn't care for the commotion he caused and was in his own world. Grand Mastery of Armament Hockey, seems to actively ignore all forms of defenses, including both fruit and that of bodily means. He concluded, if not for Damien's ultimate body, of the six supreme arts, that attack would have done quite a lot more. Then something even crazier happened. Crack crunch. Under the eyes of thousands, Damien's ravaged chest started to warp. The black bones creaked back into perfection as the cracks were mended together. The obliterated muscles and flesh warped back into existence as they too gave out a black luster. The skin grew back around the injury as it was fresh and new. Damien's chest was left spotless as if nothing had happened. Sengoku gave out a shaken voice, even Garp's open attack didn't take him down, just what kind of recovery is that? Basara grabbed the left side of his face as he felt the empty eye socket, he cannot be allowed to leave here alive. Damien was left shirtless as his attire slowly reformed. He then jumped out of the cave and landed back on the suicidal Rambo. The female pirates who were crazy enough to sail with the rocks pirates took a deep gulp as they saw the powerful body of the sin incarnate that brimmed with endless power. Dash dash dash, F W O O asterisk. The seas held as the Titanic and the Oro Jackson had also arrived beside Damien's ship. The Oro Jackson and the suicidal Rambo were of similar size as the two ships floated side by side. What a mess, Damien said as he saw the tens of wrecked ships from Basara's earlier attack. Rayleigh, who stood parallel to Damien at the helm of Roger's ship, nodded. I suppose it's about to get slightly messier now. Many people nodded to the words as both sides seemed to slowly prep for a greater battle. Step, step, step. Melodious sounds went off as the eyes of the major pirate. Powers drifted to the main marine ship. The Ox Leod's warship. A single man walked ahead and now stood beside Sengoku who was with Basara as well. Under the reverent eyes of the thousands of marines stood three men. A young yet vigorous man roared out, the three admirals are here. Dash 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 dash. Nearby, solar flare. A raging current of destructive flames blasted out of Sol's palm. The heat that radiated out was hot enough to boil the air particles as it seemed to break the very fabric of space. The golden red flames ventured on as they came face to face with another power. River of Death. Zebek released a similar attack as an utterly black river of malignant darkness raised the earth on its march to the oncoming flames. Boom. In a spectacle of endless delight, golden sparks alongside black wisps clashed together. The black energy practically killed the air as the flames did their best to utterly evaporate it. Flap flap. Soul's wings flapped in power as he launched himself into a more advantageous area. His hand widened as each finger started to glow a blazing gold. Reign of Divinity. 
Countless orb-like jewels rained down from the hands of the overlord as the broken land beneath was left decimated. Zebik gave out a little grin as he reached for his side. Shing. The air was sliced into molecules as the Inferno Blade, Mokushiroku was unleashed. The blade cried out in impatience, finally being used. Zebik slashed down with little care for any special sword movements, instead of a raw and savage attack of absolute power. Grr. The air was ground apart as a pitch black arc of sword energy was sent out towards Saul. The two attacks cancelled out as Zebik then vanished into a black mist and appeared before the overlord. Mokushiroku shook in delight as Zebik fueled it with endless energy. The cracked blade that originally shined with red now leaked with black mist. Forsaken death. The man raged forth with his sword as he brought it down with island leveling strength upon his opponent. Saul gave out an ugly expression as his powers bubbled around him. The halo that floated behind the overlord sent out a ray of mountain melting light as it amalgamated with Sol's hybrid form. In a glorious golden road, the man rushed forth. Solar flare. B O O O O O O O O M. The sword of death smashed upon the golden light before it as the flames of the sun clashed on. All over Glint Island that was in the process of slowly being sunk was a blinding light that seemed to carry both heat and plague. The sky above was broken apart as the torrents unleashed left magma to boil out from below. Glint Island was simply nothing more than bits of large rocks that seemed to have gone through endless natural disasters. Dash 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 dash. Back to the naval battle. Damien felt the battle that ensued beyond his region of war. Shaki threw many islands while Redfield danced through them. Whitebeard brought down earthquakes while Roger sliced them apart. And of course, his humble captain that brought the very essence of death upon the walking sunbird. Though he was focused on another matter. The three admirals are here. Indeed so. Basara, Sengoku and the third man, Kurawashi were ready to join in. Damien looked at the third admiral. He was a tall and lanky man. He stood roughly ten feet in height and was rather young. His attire consisted of the usual white marine coat draped over the shoulders. Though that aside, he also wore a full jet black tuxedo and gloves. A black tie and as well as a black undershirt. He had medium long silver hair that was messily combed and a relaxed face. The man seemed barely forty. Admiral Masao, codename, Kurawashi, Damien said. The, Black Eagle, of the Marines that, oversees the Great Ox Liod's warship. Shaki who sat on the wooden rails of Damien's ship nodded as a cloud of smoke blew out of her mouth. He is a problem beyond the range of combat prowess. Damien hummed in agreement. Dash dash dash. Kurawashi raised both his arms out in the air as his eyes swam through the Marines present. Over 6,000 had died and nearly 4,000 were left with injuries. The numbers had unfavorably declined, factoring in the appearance of the new pirates. Under the ominous silence that had invaded the war, a voice broke out. Rise, my soldiers. It was Kurawashi. Rise. You, the bravest of the brave, the righteous of the right, the strongest of the strong. He continued his soliloquy, these pirates are the ones that even the monsters of the seas fear. Yet you come here, under my ship, to fight them off. Rise, every word spoken was laced in some form of power. Bell clanging, the ox Lloyd bell rang in harmony with the words of the admiral. Flap flap, with the flag of justice on our side, no one shall stand in our way. Rise, my soldiers, an invisible shockwave rippled out of the silver-haired marine as it bounced in the minds of the marines. The thousands of injured marines felt strength. Their injuries healed, bones mended, flesh returned. The face brightened with color as their hearts beat with renewed vigor. The fatally injured rose in a frenzy while the uninjured were even more hyped. It was like dead men returning to life. Tens of thousands of marines roared out in great morale. Their muscles popped with power as their strength seemed to jump to a higher level. Even the admirals and vice admirals felt their stamina return. Dash 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 dash. On the other side of the sea were the pirates in a dazed look. Seeing nearly 20,000 marines who were tired and injured heal and regain all strength was rather nerve-wracking. Yet the heart of the scummiest pirates was not shaken for long. Shaki audibly sighed, such a power in the hands of an admiral who can command tens of thousands, is rather problematic. Damien nodded, the pump pump fruit in its awakened state has the power to not only raise morale to great heights but even rejuvenate all allies. The Black Death giggled, 
it also works to weaken all enemies in its full power. And it was true, Kurawashi not only brought the marines to a new height but also caused the weaker pirates to lose strength and stamina. Commander, this is draining on our forces, Indra voiced out. Your friend here isn't wrong, young man, Rayleigh who stood only twenty or so meters away agreed. What is our gameplay? Damien gave out a wry smile, Rayleigh, I like to dance at my own pace. Taking charge like some kind of general is not my thing. The Dark King gave out a teasing smile, you might not think so but your presence is holding together a lot of these pirates. Not every pirate is keen on a sure death. Bang. W-O-R-O-R-O. Let's just rip them apart. Silver Axe also spoke up. Damien Kuhn, my axe will be at your command. Boom. W-A-W-A-W-A. I haven't fought all three admirals before, I will show them the power of Wang Ji. The elephant man roared, I'm here to fight on behalf of my lovely Newgate. You red-eyed brat better not let these marines interrupt his fight with that ugly Roger. A short woman yelled from afar. The marine mutilator Damien, my noir pirates have decided to join under the rocks, flag. Mr. Noir said as he combed his white hair. Ellipsis. The newly joined crews all gave out some one-liners as Damien could only sigh. Yufufufu, Damien Chan, they're all yours. The man rolled his eyes as he walked a few steps forward. Damien proceeded to give out a quick plan as the rest nodded in response. Step. He then walked to the very edge of his ship and stood on the railing, his eyes burned with excitement. Under the eyes of the tens of thousands of pirates, a rather admiring scene occurred. The clouds that had arrived due to the very tension of the battle seemed to warp. They twisted and churned as a single hole formed at the area directly above the Sin Incarnate. Leaving him bathed in the hue of dawn, the young man then extended his arm out. Fu asterisk. The air grumbled as the onlookers saw a streak of black and red blast out of a sunken ship. Boom. A small explosion went off as Damien's Yushi returned into his grasp. Under the coming fleet of endless, reinvigorated navy soldiers headed by five admiral-level marines was a pirate of age less than twenty years. A crimson burst of hockey went off as all the eyes were drawn to the man in the middle. Damien held Yushi as the flawless supreme blade was pointed directly at the Ox Liod's warship that was kilometers away. An ominous wind raged all around as the voices of the world were invoked. A small grin spread across Damien's face as, take out all that bottled up rage that you harbor for years and rip all these marines to shreds. And what's the worst that can happen? His voice bounced over the seas. You'll only just die. Chapter 110 the pirates didn't necessarily need any morale boosters but rather something to clear their minds. Damien's words were sufficient. The thousands of men raised their weapons in crazed smiles as their spirits soared into a glorious cry. Many were blood-soaked or injured yet this wasn't their first rodeo. Spit sprang out as their yells merged into a symphony of resolve. Damien had tasked the stronger forces with specific enemies, his goal wasn't to kill all the marines but rather to take out a single target. Dash 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 dash. Under the shutters of hidden cameras, the forces of both sides raged ahead once more. Damien simply waved his hand as the tens of broken ships in his way were reduced to sizes beyond the naked eye, leaving behind clear seas. Boom. Bang. Whiz asterisk. Both sides started to trade endless fire as the cannons exploded with gunpowder. Streaks of dust followed the countless cannonballs as the naval battle continued. The ships in the front bore most of the damage as they once again reached the rocky field that Basara had created. The battle changed from overseas to on land. Cries of pure malice rang as thousands of pirates jumped out of the ships and raged towards the Sea of Marines. Under the fire of the ships from afar, it was truly a fearful spectacle and not for the faint of heart. Pieces of flesh rained down as blood seemed more common than oxygen at this point. The ground below had turned from a bronze color to that of primal red. Boom. Zephyr's seastone fist smashed upon a fruit wielder as his entire body popped like a grape. The admiral candidate was on a crusade as he vanquished great amounts of foes. His black fist was about to clear another group of pirates, however. Clang. Asterisk. It stopped mid-air. A spiky black club alongside two hockey-clad swords pushed it back. Ripples of shock spread onto the ground below as the two sides clashed. That damn Damien. One of the two men yelled out. He thinks he can order me around. I'll rip him apart soon enough. Kaido, 
You wail a lot like a child but you still do as that Damien guy said. Gabon, his, companion, laughed out. The giant only growled like an angered beast as the thick club smashed harder on his marine opponent. Zephyr was pushed back as his feet dug into the ground, his eyes squinted. I see, he said. So the, sin incarnate, sent two non-fruit wielders to deal with me, a good plan. Rumble. Kaido dropped his club haphazardly as he mumbled. Ha, huh, if Damien could take your arm then I can take your life. Dash 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 dash. Damn pirates. Basara roared out as he dropped large boulders onto the oncoming masses of men. He molded the earth far, far beneath the ground to his advantage, after all, he is a paramesha. With such a fruit, the pirates were quite threatened. Bam! A large 60 meter wide rock that was about to fall upon a few ships was slashed in half with little resistance. It was a clean cut that sliced and simply shredded the giant boulder. Mama ma ma'am ma, ma. A loud laugh went off. That Damien started giving orders, I'll take you down first Basara and then go and harvest that kid's seeds afterwards. Napoleon then descended upon the one-eyed admiral as he clicked his tongue in response. Giant parts of earth coiled in the air as they bombarded upon the buxom pirate. Big Mom knew she was on the losing side in terms of firepower so she decided a shift of arms. Zeus, Prometheus, come to me. Hi Mama. Dash 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 dash. With explosions and shockwaves going off on all sides, it was surely quite the view. Damien stood on the pirate side as he viewed the battle. That giant friend of yours works quite well with Gabon, Rayleigh commented from the side. To which Damien scoffed, Kaido is not exactly my friend, but he's easy to work with. You just gotta punch harder than him and that gets him quite driven. While the two chatted, a marine squad approached. They moved at great speeds as they whizzed through the air. They were the special forces, Cheetah Division. You're open, Sin Incarnate. The cat-like rear admiral roared out as six other shadows flew around him. Each one had a weapon drawn as they aimed at Damien. Bang! Asterisk. A single shot went off as each fell dead, with the rear admiral barely breathing. The wounds left behind sizzling steam as they practically drained into the bodies of the marines while explosion marks surrounded the area of impact. Black Death. The last living marine growled in anger. Shaki stood on Damien's side as her pistol sent out smoke from the muzzle. The woman just winked as she shot elsewhere, one hand busy with a cigarette while the other shot endless bullets. Damien just rolled his eyes as he saw her go off in a frenzy. All the while the golden-haired man nearby was left speechless. What a woman! Rayleigh muttered as his eyes were glued on Shaki's silhouette. He was lost in thought as he subconsciously fixed his posture and seemed to stand quite tall. Damien saw the distracted pirate and gave out a wry expression. Oye, Rayleigh, he called out. Stop dawdling and get a move on. The Dark King just nodded as he loosened his collar a bit and fixed his hair. Vush asterisk. He then whizzed forth in a flash of silver rather flamboyantly. Three rear admirals fell as his saber went forwards to his target. Boom. In an explosion of gold and silver, Rayleigh clashed with a giant Buddha. The Dark King was rather energetic as he seemed to go beyond the necessary as he fought the Admiral. Damien deadpanned as he heard Shaki giggle from the side. Is he seriously trying to impress a girl 14 years younger than him? He thought, rather jaw dropped. Shaki nay, I'll let you hold the fort, Damien announced. I still have an unfinished duel with someone. Dash 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 dash. Nearby. Fire. Boom. Bang. Whiz asterisk, cannons continuously fired as warships traded fury over the giant rocky field. A shadow flashed, bam, the captain of the ship saw a rocket of a punch before the very floor beneath his feet was annihilated. Rumble, the sails fell, the wood broke apart, the frame collapsed. A single punch, Garp was on a mission, he had made up a quick mini-game in his head, destroy as many ships. Within a single minute. Every ship destroyed equals 100 bags of rice crackers from Sengoku's pocket. And naturally, the deal was not previously discussed with the Sengoku. He was about to destroy another ship, until, boom, a blazing red trail of air current went off as Garp was lifted off his feet and tossed meters away. Like a stone skipping over the sea, the vice admiral eventually was smacked onto a marine ship. This air cannon isn't half bad, Damien thought as he tried out his six supreme arts. 
a move with enough power to leave a hole through a mountain. Rocks cluttered about as Garp stood up, lacking even a scratch. Biwahaha, he laughed. I was wondering when you'd come back, Damien boy. I hear you have a very special way of teaching the young, a punch to set them right, Damien said. I respect that. Garp's eyes brightened like stars, to appreciate my fist of love, teaching technique, you are even better than I thought. Damien gave a knowing nod as he recalled the effectiveness of the fist of love that he used on Kuzan and Mahawk. It works wonders, he said. It instills both discipline and a sense of measure. Very effective. Biwahaha. Garp let out a boisterous laugh and gave Damien a thumbs up. Damien's eyes then sharpened as a certain dread filled the scene. Hee <laughs> hee, that aside, we still have an unfinished contest, Garp. You showed me your crazy armament so now it's my turn. Garp raised an eyebrow as he saw the red-eyed youth. FWWWM asterisk. A soft hum of metal plating went off as black armor coated Damien's body. The plates then started to bond and ripple about. The armor on the back was coiled in unison as they creaked out in a malleable shape. Seconds passed as feather-like blades pointed out from the newly made black wings. Red mist bubbled around the hockey-clad humanoid that now remained. Hadeen release. Garp hummed. Oh, I wonder how many fists it'll take to break that armor. Damien grinned as he set his Yushi to Ravager configuration. Frenzy. The wings behind Damien suddenly exploded into endless wings as they sliced through the air in a razor-sharp fashion. They hailed down on the Vice Admiral as the man simply raised his hands in an X shape to shield himself. Vu asterisk. The wind blew as Damien appeared two meters away from Garp, using, blink, of the supreme arts. Grr. The wind grated along with the blades of Yushi as it erupted with great power. Damien's single left hand held the sword as it raged upon the marine's chest. Clang. Asterisk. It was like a gong made of thick metal that had gone off as the supreme blade smashed onto Garp's hockey ed body. Groan the vice admiral let out a painful grunt as he smiled in return. His single left palm pushed at Yushi while the other was reeled back. FWWWWMM asterisk. A thick coating of armament boiled around the man's fist as a bubble of crimson energy materialized upon it. Nah, uh, not taking that hit again, Damien said offhandedly. Vru asterisk. The air was pulverized as Damien's open right hand was raised open as crimson energy whirled around. A fist sized red pyramid of black patterns formed. Atomic fracture. The object then blazed out in a cone shaped attack as it directly rammed onto Garp's face. B O O O O M. Blood shot out of the vice admiral's mouth as he felt his very face being crunched up and dismantled. He was then sent flying back with great force, ripping and tearing the lands in his wake. Boom. He crashed on a marine ship hundreds of meters away as debris rained down in great amounts. The nearby marines rushed to the fallen hero as they were left dumbfounded. The fist who regularly clashed with the likes of Shaki, Nugate and even Zebek to a point was thrown back. Clatter. Wood was. Displaced as a shadow stood up. Garp let out a low chuckle as he wiped the blood from his mouth. I let my guard down, he muttered as hockey boiled around him. I'll stop treating you like a kid now, he said. Here I come. Dust was the only thing left as the marine shot out as the air screamed from the sheer momentum around the man. Damien appeared a few meters above. Whiz. His body started moving faster than the eye could see as tens of Damiens seemed to materialize around the vice admiral. Each floated with a gentle wind, prepping an attack. Onslaught. Like a cannon, tens of attacks landed down from every angle as it was nothing but a flurry of black and red streaks that lit up the air. It was a gatling gun of endless attacks that made their way down to the chosen target. Garp's eyes flashed in concentration as his blackened fists smashed every single attack in the absolute counter. Wherever there was an attack, there was a fist to meet it. Boom. Pop asterisk bam. Air pockets exploded from the constant collisions as Damien moved once more. Floated around seven meters in the air, gently spinning in impatience as its wielder raced ahead. In an impulse, Damien tries a more hands-on approach. The Hadeen form held on as the fist's molten fists raged forth. Bam. Boom. Garp's eyes glowed red as his punches grew heavier and heavier, each attack filled with endless emission hockey. Damien responded with equal passion. The people that watched nearby were left flabbergasted as they felt the shockwaves reach their very bones from every collision that took place in the air. 
Damien's hockey of arms was weaker than Garp so he used his pulverizing fruit powers as they seemed to reach a new high. Crimson atoms rolled in that seemed different than the others. They possessed the quality to break things apart at atomic and even subatomic levels. Every punch sent out currents of every powered blows that drilled into Garp's fist and even shook his bones, leaving them slightly numb. Damien also felt mountains of force as his body took in the strength of the man grant the title as, the fist. The clash ensued as time passed. Dash 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 dash. The rest of the war was nothing but death and pain. Damien's division mates clashed with rear and vice admirals as the newly arrived supporters did the same. Roger's crew faced strong foes as the casualties piled on. The pirate side had dropped to around 14,000 and the opposition sat at around 16,000. Dash 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 dash. Per or until the musical note, a young voice went out. Mama put me in charge, let's go, you all. Perispero, Oven, Daifuku and Katakori stood at the helm of a smaller ship of candy galore. The ship had detached after Big Mom had clashed with Zephyr obeying an order directly from their loving mother. Apollo Island, it's where Saul keeps all his gold, Perispero said. Cuckoo cuckoo, mama needs a lot of it to work on Toto land. Let's go. Katakori remained silent as a form of agreement. HMPH, let's hurry before the other losers get there. Oven announced in a frenzy of warm air as his fruit power was released. Don't forget what mama said. We move quietly so don't make too much noise, Daifuku grumbled from the side. Set sail, per or until the musical note. Dash 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 dash. Indra Kun, the last portion of Damien Chan's plan is left to you, Shaki called out as she rained down fire on a horde of marines. The brown-haired man just nodded as he stood with something glowing in his hand. Rumble, four ginormous feet slammed onto the ground as Wang Ji's jumped from his ship to Indra's side. Sheing asterisk, in a breath of silver was silver axe as he too appeared. Wawa wawa, let's do it, swift death. Andor's axe shone in the sun as he spoke up as well, we shall clear the path for you. The pirate in question, gave a solemn nod, then let's not waste any more time. Chapter 111, Indra who was acting as a tide reversal took a moment to recall what happened nearly 40 minutes ago. The commander wants to do more than just hold back the navy and give me quite the mission, he thought. It was a difficult task but as Damien's current right-hand man, Indra would certainly complete it, even at the cost of his life. Explosions lined up the horizon as the three men took off with Indra in the lead and Andor and Wangji near his side. The marine battleships continued their fire across the giant rocky landscape as the pirates returned fire in great passion. Slash. Crunch. Andor slashed a volley of tens of cannonballs while Wang Ji crushed them with great strength. Vush asterisk, they flashed through the battlefield as most of the marines' attention was turned towards the bigger problems. Crossing nearly 80% of the way to the marines' side, they were finally blocked. Thud, three people landed in front of Indra's like an entourage. Vice Admiral Toro, and Rear Admirals Pretzel and Decarther, Indra recited out loud as he saw the marines. Toro was a 12-foot-tall marine with a feral face and horn-shaped hairstyle. Surrender yourselves, pirates, the vice admiral roared as he turned into a bull-human hybrid. W-A-W-A-W-A, Wang Ji bellowed out, a little cow with horns, maybe I should pull out a red cloth to deal with you. Toro growled in anger as he raged on ahead with his subordinate's support. Boom, Silver Axe smashed the bottom of his shiny weapon onto the ground as it was coated in thick hockey. Indra Kun, your mission is key to turning the tides in our favor, let us hold back these marines. The pirate known as the, Swift Death, could only nod as he disappeared from his spot. Whoosh asterisk, like a ghost, his body simply flashed right through the three marines who were too slow to even react. Before they could try and halt Indra, Andor and Wang Ji had already acted. Boom. The blackened axe smashed upon the raging bull while Wang Ji's ginormous sword was thrust upon the two rear admirals leading to a deadlock. Dash 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 dash. Indra who had eaten the swift swift fruit could be considered to be the one of, if not, the fastest man alive. His speed was equal to Damien in Hadin form and was enough to break the sound barrier. Even though the three pirates made it four-fifths of the way across the rocky landscapes, they were still noticed by the higher level marines, yet none acted as they thought Toro was enough to stop them. 
Yet now Indra was rocketing through the marine's ships and entering deep into their formation. Your speed will leave them in shock and give you the opportunity to fulfill your task, Indra recalled Damien's words. Indra's eyes were filled with a certain excitement. He then grasped the object Damien had given him and stored it in his pocket as he neared his destination. Thud. His black boots let out a resounding thud as he reached the very core of the marine formation. His target had been reached, the Ox Leod's warship. He was about to act until a soft yet strict voice went off. Shigan shower. Bam. Boom. Kaboom. Tens of sharp and condensed bullet-like pockets of air rained down on the unsuspecting Indra. They were sharp and thick globs of air. Sheing asterisk. Indra took out his great sword, Junkatsu as it shined a beautiful black. One sword style. Dance of the white. In a mesmerizing spectacle, the tens upon tens of air bullets were cut in small explosions as Indra's soft yet sharp sword techniques broke out. Hum, not bad. As expected of the Sin Incarnate's top subordinate, the same voice from earlier was heard. Indra looked up at the shadow not so far away and muttered, Marine Admiral. Kurawashi. Dash 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 dash. Sengoku and Rayleigh were currently in a duel. The giant Buddha drifted his eyes to the giant ship at the heart of the marine formation and then to Damien who was currently in a fight with Garp. What is his goal? Sending his subordinate to fight Kurawashi. There's no logic in such a move. He mumbled in thought. Rayleigh saw his enemy in thought and laughed, that young man seems to get stronger a little too fast. He's already reached quite a level, don't you agree, Sengoku? The giant golden Buddha then focused on the dark king before him. I na di. Damien. He causes quite the mess every turn he takes, Sengoku drained as his fist was covered with a golden bubble. Impact wave. A golden shockwave of pure power raged out from the admiral's palm as it branched out with endless momentum. Rayleigh gave out an appreciative hum as his saber was coated with a fresh coat of armament. The Starry Knight. In a beautiful silver slash of excellent swordsmanship, the advancing golden attack was cut through the center causing it to implode on itself in a dim fizzle. Sengoku's eyes squinted solemnly as his enormous 25-foot-tall frame jumped into the air. The atmosphere groaned as the Buddha fell with great flair, palms opened. Big Buddha impact. The Dark King responded with equal passion. The coming storm. Dash 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 dash. Elsewhere. Dreaded devastation. Two giant swirling swarms of mountainous rocks raged out with deafening grace. Ma ma ma'am ma. Your rocks have grown softer, Basara. Big Mom yelled out as she extended Napoleon into its greatest form. Ikoku Sovereignty. A grand slash of raiding pink sword energy rippled out as the spear of Elbaf shot ahead at the coming attack. The two fluid mountain attacks were shredded apart as Linlin -lin raced ahead. War Dominion. The black flintlock in her left arm aimed ahead at the floating admiral as a powerful bullet clad in hockey shot out. The air swarmed around it like a powerful wave as the single attacks exploded with great energy. Basara raised both hands in the air. Grace of Gia, five thick and solid wall-like mountains extended from the seas below providing a power shield. Boom. Bang. Rumble. The bullet cut through the first four and was finally stopped by the last wall. Lin Lin didn't halt, however. She raced ahead as she pocketed her gun, leaving an empty hand. FWMMM asterisk. Armament coated her fist. H.A. She smashed it upon the final obstacle. Boom. The wall shattered like glass as the beautiful pirate continued her advance. Trembling Earth. Escalibur. A humongous rocky sword made of pure earth blasted out from sea below as it thundered its way to the evil spirit. Crackle Blaze. Big Mom grabbed a thundering cloud and a blazing sun, her strongest homies as she replied to the admiral in equal fervor. Matriarchal Tyranny. Dash 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 dash. Nearby. Fist of Pain. A mountain crumbling fist raged on as it met a cracked black fist that swirled with crimson energy. The two fists persisted in absolute stubbornness and both sides traded incredible amounts of energy. The shockwave released caused the nearby men to have their eardrums explode as the sound waves echoed in their cranium. Damien gritted his teeth as he felt the strength of absolute armament from his opponent. Like being struck by a mountain, Damien felt an instantaneous transfer of force as his black bones seemed to shake from within. His head ringing, the young man said, Damn Garp, your fists hurt even more than Newgate Austin's quakes. Garp just smirked as a sharp breath was released from his slightly bloodied mouth. Hee hee, you're not half bad either, Damien boy. 
He then shook his head in disbelief, even Roger and Newgate. Don't eat my fists as you do, just what kind of monster did Zebek find? Biwahaha. The two shot forth once more into another clash. You know, Garp, I can feel sparks of Conqueror's hockey from you, but they feel empty and hollow. Wanna tell me what that's about? Damien was questioning the man as the two continuously traded heavy fists in the air. Boom. Garp took a punch and fused Conqueror's hockey with a loud grunt. The vice admiral then gave a big grin with some blood decorating his white teeth. Hee hee. Don't worry about that kid. I just made a choice a while ago that I ended up regretting. But don't think it makes my fists any lighter. Bam. A powerful punch slammed Damien's core as he was sent soaring back 20 meters. The sin incarnate cracked his stiff neck as he regained his balance. A regretted decision eh? He humped. Well. I won't ask any more but I hope you can show me something more cuz I'm only getting started. Damien then changed to a high offensive combat strategy relying on his absurd bodily strength to hold up against the enemy's power. In a burst of air, Garp jumped up into an arc as his blackened foot slashed down like a battle axe upon Damien's head. Boom. In an X-shaped shield, Damien held on. His arms shook uncontrollably from the absolute strength of the marine, yet his bones remained strong. A quick current of air raged as Damien shot open his crossed arm, causing Garp to be pushed back. The Vice Admiral regained his balance and burst ahead once more as his hockey ed fist dug into Damien's stomach. Bam! A loud bang went off as Damien ate the attack with a pained groan. Garp was hunched down with a grin, putting more and more power into his fist as it dug even further, knocking the breath out of his adversary. However, boom! Damien raised his hands and interlocked his fingers, adjoining both hands. He then smashed it down upon the Vice Admiral's wide back, sending a mix of hockey and pulverizing energy into the man. Seeing Garp reeling in slight pain, Damien tried to make some distance, however. Grab. A powerful grip held onto Damien's right leg as he was caught in midair. Bang. A loud gong-like sound resounded as Garp's head butted Damien's wide a black forehead of hockey. The young pirate's eyes widened as he seemed to lose consciousness for a split second. He he. Garp chuckled as he then readied a powerful fist to discipline his younger foe. F W O O asterisk. Air bounced particles around as Garp's fist of love was ready, grand mastery of armament hockey pouring in. Damien regained his train of thought as he saw the coming attack. Without hesitation, he made an unpredictable move. Crack. It was a loud crunch sound the snapping of bones to the nth level. Garp's eyes widened as his jaw dropped in surprise. He saw Damien, who was caught by the leg like a fish in a hook, turn 360 degrees around his immobile leg, twisting wholly in a circle. The leg bones snapped and tore apart, fresh blood spurted out as Damien spun in great speed with little care. His free left foot traveled in a circular motion as it smashed onto Garp's shocked face in a spectacle of red and black. Bam! The currents of hockey and nigh-awakened pulverizing energy rammed inside Garp's skull. The vice admiral who was caught off guard by Damien's unorthodox means was sent flying into a marine warship in a spurt of red. Snap! The onlookers blinked their eyes as they saw Damien's broken and twisted leg spin around in a flurry of red as it snapped back into place. Almost as if it were made of rubber. Rumble! Wood clattered about as Garp popped the air back into position blood trailing down his lips, a visible bruise of purple on his cheek. Garp massaged his face, putting his jaw back. Into place. Doesn't that hurt? He then questioned with a huff. Damien smirked, of course it does. Garp blew a cloud of dust as he shot ahead once more, caring little for strategy and relying on his brute strength like an unstoppable train. Damien saw the crazed marine and made a move. He extended out his hands as the winds were cut from the coming of Yushi. Bang. Like a gunshot, the weapon smashed into the young man's grip. The supreme weapon buzzed in delight. F W W W W W M M asterisk. Aside from the ruo flowing around Yushi, Damien added another little sprinkle of power. Let's see what's harder, my blade or your fists. Grr. Sounds like the grating of steel broke out as the tip of Yushi's ravager form was buzzing with powerful crimson torrents of power. The air around the blade went beyond the usual obliteration and to the point where it was simply not. It was a thin coat of absolute void and emptiness that covered the supreme sword. All atoms within an inch of the unbreakable metal seemed to have been utterly destroyed. Yushi, 
who was born with the addition of Damien's fruit powers, seemed to have grown a step further. Even the Ryu energy had vanished and had seeped into the metal, leaving behind a dull yet ominous shadow of void and utter vacuum around the blade. Atomic Saber, swish voosh asterisk, like a masterful swordsman, Damien twirled Yushi into a crimson circular spectacle as broken cracks followed all around. Garp cracked his knuckles together as he gave out an audible chuckle. Armament hockey of the Grand Master stage danced around his steel-like fists as they seemed to have enough power to break islands in half. With a bang, both men shot forth with grand Rokushiki maneuvers, rocketing through the ever-chaotic skies. Eyes around the area drifted to the sky as they saw a spectacle of blazing red and dazzling green, the world seemed to pause. It was a moment of pin-drop silence as the two powerhouses were about to collide. The air currents themselves seemed to wrap around Garp's fists as the raven black hockey polished with endless emission shot out. Damien's Yushi seemed to leave a trail of broken actuality as black cracks of conquerors hockey in unison with impressive Ryu ran ahead. Alas, they touched. Boom. An ear-rattling screech, a mind-numbing shockwave and a sea-quaking spectacle ensued. The blue sky shifted from its original azure color to a giant bubble of dark red and warm green with the two men at the core. Yushi seemed to yell out in anger as its advent simply could not be stopped. Garp's right fist that was smashed upon the blade shook violently as it took in the atom dismantling energy and infused hockey that seeped into his very bones. The vice admiral's eyes turned white in fury, his spirit remained unwavering. Damien felt the weight of the seven seas thrust onto his body as endless fruit energy and hockey were channeled to his weapon as he too put everything in. Giant waves of water exploded around the two men that clashed in the sky and brought about their own disaster-like presence to the ones nearby. Thousands of bodies were lifted into the air as they cried out in fear. Like a rainstorm, the bodies showered down onto the broken ships, shaking waters and the cracked rock platform. It was something out of a book, simply apocalyptic. Chapter 112 Indra was at a standstill with Kurawashi, though his odds decreased by the second. Kurawashi used his masterful Rokushiki to counter Indra's great speed, whizzing to the air and delivering powerful attacks. You cannot contend with my strength, Kurawashi said. It's best if you surrender. Indra gave out an unyielding growl as he retreated to the skies. One sword style. Beautiful death. A. Eh? Grand and majestic silhouette of a peacock appeared behind the pirate as his body amalgamated with the power. Like a meteor, he shot down upon the admiral. Kurawashi extended both his arms out, parallel to each other with bald in fists facing each other. Rokuogen, like a cannon, an enormous stream of white energy blasted out from the admiral's side and towards the descending peacock-like attack. B -o, 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 o M. A powerful shockwave broke out as Indra's attack was destroyed. Soru. Kurawashi appeared behind Indra as the four fingers of his right hand tapped the pirate's back. Fatal four air bullet. Pua. Indra's eyes widened as blood shot out from the four holes that opened up from his back and out of his chest. His body was shot from the sky to the warship below. It's useless. My observation is higher than yours so regardless of your speed, you will always lose, Kurawashi said offhandedly. Wooden debris fell to the ground as Indra slowly stood up. His black eyes looked at the foe and a small smile appeared on his face, are you sure about that? Vush asterisk, in a fraction of a second, the pirate simply disappeared. The admiral's face remained as usual as he knew the result from beforehand. That was until Kurawashi's eyes widened in disbelief. Ah, uh, the admiral groaned as he felt a saber drill into his lower abdomen. If not for Kurawashi's experience and muscle memory, that blade would surely have gone through his heart. Soru. Wheeze asterisk. The wind rippled once more though as this time Kurawashi was the one to retreat. The admiral gave out a few deep breaths as blood dripped from his body. He looked at Indra and saw an odd occurrence. What is that steam around his body? The marine wondered with a grunt. Shish. It was a soft yet constant whistle of air resounded from the pirate's body. Kurawashi stood back up as he had understood what had happened. You're speeding up your blood flow within your body to greatly increase your body's physical output. He then seemed rather puzzled, even with the marine technique, same a Kikan, such a maneuver should destroy your blood vessels and kill you immediately. Indra hummed as he reveled in the increased strength. The swift swift fruit is beyond just physical speed. It even allows me to speed up my blood flow without any bodily harm. It just takes a lot of stamina to use, for now, that is. He thought, 
The commander has incredible thought process, Indra said. I would have never thought of such a way to use my powers, how delightful. His eyes then sharpened in determination, time to finish my task. His body steamed endlessly from the increased heat from hypertension within Indra's body as he whizzed forth. It was the same thing once more, the speed that Indra reached was just barely in Kurawashi's vision but still left him shocked. Dance of the unknown tempo. Indra was practically teleporting as his body suddenly appeared a meter in front of the admiral. Graceful demise. The hockey-clad sword once again shot forth at the marine who could only show an annoyed expression. Tekai. Go. Like an immovable mountain, Kurawashi's body became stiff as his muscles were nothing short of pure metal. Hockey was then plated around his arms that defended his chest in an X shape. Clang. Asterisk. Like a metallic gong, the sword smashed upon the defensive marine as he held the force back. Soft blue streams of energy streamed out, each boosted by the swift swift fruit as they flowed into the admiral's body. With the sound barrier shattering speed and momentum, even Kurawashi wasn't enough. Boom. With a small explosion, the silver-haired marine was shot back into a nearby warship, drilling his way into the very hull. Breaking, and shredding his way through, causing much of the ship to collapse on itself. Ha! Ah, Indra gave out a loud breath as he felt his body slow down dramatically. I've only gained this power for a few months, a pity that I cannot fully portray its power. He sighed, shish. The steam exploded once more out from Indra's body as he shot ahead in an unsuspecting direction. Instead of attacking the dazed admiral, he instead went towards the very core of the Oxloid's warship. Vush asterisk, he whizzed through so fast that even the marine workers and soldiers stationed nearby saw nothing but felt enough wind to lift them off their feet. The Ox Lloyd's warship was nearly 160 meters in length so it was certainly a noticeable amount of distance to work through. Thud. After around three seconds later, Indra landed, give or take, at the core of the ship. Kurawashi was down for at least 15 seconds so Indra had to finish his mission now. He reached down to his pocket and took out what he was given from his boss. It was a ball with a diameter of about 10 centimeters. It pulsed with a warm current every so often as black and red currents drifted about its surface. The heat given off was rather alarming. If you saw it in detail, you would see a light green gem at the very center of the sphere that gave off a bright light. It was incredibly heavy for its negligible size. Though I have no clue what this does, it seems quite critical, the pirate thought as he placed the ball on the ground. Vu asterisk, like a balloon filled with helium, the ball floated up into the air. It reached a height of about two meters off the deck. Red bursts of energy rippled out to counteract the pull of gravity. Indra's goal was complete. To place this single ball at the heart of the ox Lloyds. But then, surrender now, swift death, Indra. Hundreds of guns cocked in preparation and swords were unsheathed from their scabbards. Around 600 marines had swarmed around the infamous pirate, ready to strike. Thud. A heavy stomp rang out as another shadow landed. Kurawashi Taisho, Masao San, an irritated Kurawashi had arrived, his lazily combed hair was rather messy, his coat ripped. An annoyed and indignant expression plastered to his face. He was about to give the order to take down the pretentious pirate until his eyes drifted above. Vu asterisk, he felt the soft hum of the floating sphere, an ominous feeling filled his heart. What is that thing? Indra had run out of fuel as his body no longer steamed, his muscles had begun to grow stiff and sore. The admiral clicked his tongue in slight trepidation, take him down. Dash dash dash. At the same time, another conversation broke out. Tell me, Garp, have you heard of nuclear fission? Damien asked as he wiped the blood that dribbled out his mouth. Currently, the young pirate had a missing wing and cracks all over his armor that slowly regenerated. Garp, whose arm seemed rather purple and bruised, gave out a confused expression. Is it the new brand of rice crackers from the North Blue I've heard so much about? The Sin Incarnate rolled his eyes. Simply put, it's when the nucleus of an atom is split into smaller pieces. A light smile then broke out on Damien's face, guess what happens when you break apart a highly radioactive mineral into smaller pieces through a chain reaction? Garp drew a blank and was left scratching his head but Damien didn't exactly conceal his voice. Sengoku, who was pushing Rayleigh into a weakened position, fell into dire thought. His instincts kicked in as he scanned the battlefield. He saw the pulsing ball that rested on the ox Leods. His eyes then drifted to Damien who waved his hand back in a retreating gesture. 
The resourceful general looked around and saw some other signs. He saw Shaki give a signal to the higher ranking pirates as they carried out their orders. He then observed as the pirates slowly fell into an immediate retreat like a horde of crazed chickens. Even Rayleigh had burst into a silver streak and disappeared. The Sea Kings below, with a keen instinct that allowed them to escape disaster, had also begun to flee. Sengoku's eyes widened in panic. Garp, come with me, he yelled out. N-O-W. The marines were befuddled, all except the Golden Buddha. In an instant, all the admiral-level marines responded to Sengoku's cry and followed his trail. Vush asterisk, Indra, who was in the process of being put into seastone chains, also took a brief moment to explode into great volumes of steam as he swiftly vanished into a storm of dust. As of now, Kurawashi was the only one there as the four other top powers made their way over in a dash of desperation. Damien stood in the sky as he put up a void space around him. It's too late now. The tens of thousands of pirates that remained only followed orders, though some refused to come, much to their coming dismay. Shaki and Rayleigh looked up with curiosity about Damien's next move. The young pirate in question made a simple gesture. Snap. With the snap of a finger, the crimson sphere reacted with an ominous glow. In a fraction of a second, the outer crimson liquid-like layer was sucked into the center as only the green ore was left behind. What proceeded was truly a terrifying spectacle. The big bang. Boom. A sea ruptured explosion resounded on the ox Lloyds as apocalyptic levels of flames and heat were instantly released. The fireball was hot enough to immediately cause the top tens of meters of seawater to evaporate. Wood and metal nearby had also begun to melt into liquids and some even to gases. Rumble. Added to the heat, there was the shockwave. It was essentially a pressure that burst out from the center of the explosion, traveling at supersonic speeds, spreading in all directions. This exact pressure pushed out a wall of highly compressed air, creating a frightening source of destruction. Kurawashi, who was the closest, was immediately caught in the explosion. Even with full body armament and Tekai Go, his entire body was swept up by the flames and brute shock from the bomb Damien had dropped. Uggish, the admiral gave out a loud cry of pain as his body was ruptured from all angles. He was bathed in the fury of the flames as the shockwave rippled into his body, destroying it from within. Thud X4. Garp, Sengoku, Zephyr, and Basara landed. The light currently being released from the explosion lit up the entirety of the seas. It was a spectacle of absolute annihilation. And since it occurred at the center of the marine formation, most of the ships around it were immediately blasted and rocked into great pandemonium. Even the 500 meter tall mountain that circled the battlefield shattered apart from it as the falling rocks and boulders disintegrated. Hold the blast. Sengoku roared out to his colleagues. FWWWMMM. Fu asterisk. Multiple things happened. For one, each of the four admiral level marines raised both arms out as they surrounded it from all sides. Thick hockey currents flowed onto their arms as they were then churned with emission hockey. The collective emission of all four created a bubble like container that covered the entire explosion in a giant light red sphere. Basara then summoned giant mountains around the Ox Lloyd's warship as it made a huge earth shell. Yet even then, rumble, the world itself seemed to shake as the mighty warship had cracks and scars appear all over. Even though it was built with wood from the treasure tree Adam, it simply wasn't enough. Sengoku turned into a Buddha and used his shockwave attacks to try and counter the explosion wave and somewhat succeeded. Zephyr used a combination of advanced armament and supreme Rokushiki. Garp, who was injured from his five-hour clash with Damien, fueled his hockey in desperation as he roared out in opposition. Under the drain of significant levels of hockey, the four men continued their struggle as the fireball was fully contained, now it was a waiting game. Would the four marines, hockey run out first or the ore that was still splitting at the core of the bomb? Even with the blast under control, the marines weren't exactly scot-free. Not even close. The initial heat released had disintegrated around seven ships and four warships. The sound wave then caused not only the eardrums but even the brains of the nearby marines to explode like grapes. The other ships further away were greatly rocked by the rumbling and shaking caused by the explosion. The casualty count was not small, to say the least. Damien squinted his eyes as he extended Yushi out in a simple gesture. Now, while the marines are shaken up, destroy them. Oh Auk. A deafening war cry broke out as the injured and fatigued pirates saw the chaos on the navy's side. 
From the blood that stained the broken seas or the constant wails from trapped and dying marines was nothing but music to their ears. From 16,000 marines to no more than 9,000. The tides had turned from a single attack. Chapter 113. The Remains of Glint Island. Gurug asterisk. Gulp. Burp. Asterisk. Two men sat face to face on a broken part of the island that slowly drifted about. Oye. Newgate. This stuff isn't bad. Roger declared as he drank from a large sake cup. Whitebeard too was gulping down liters of sake like it was oxygen. That kid Damien's had a sake fruit user in his division. I almost tried to steal him myself, Gerara. The giant man laughed, rumble. Both men then looked to the far horizon and saw the giant fireball that was soon covered in a mountainous shield, even then, the rumbling of the very plates beneath seemed to reach here. Roger's jaw dropped, that Damien guy truly is the marine's nightmare, wahaha. Gurarara, wahaha, gurarara, ellipsis, dash dash dash, nearby, rumble, the same rumbling traveled to this part of the sea as well. It seems the navy has been hit hard once more by that young man, an aloof voice broke out. Redfield, how dare you look away in the midst of our fight? Shaki roared in anger as he slashed down a golden arc of endless energy. The man in question simply countered it with an equally powerful attack from his umbrella. Paha, that aside, it's best I head back now. I had a delightful time in our little contest, Shaki Kum, Redfield said as he prepared to leave. The golden lion growled in rage as he felt like he was being treated like a toy. You damn red prick. The red count then proceeded to take out a pen and a few leaves from his pocket that seemed to give out a faint warmth. Do busy yourself with this parting gift, Redfield smiled as he wrote something on the leaves. Poof. The five leaves exploded into a cloud of smoke as a few shadows stepped out. Under the flag of justice, we will take you down. Shaki, take my fist on that shiny head of yours. Pirate scum, surrender, golden lion Shaki, it's time to take you down. I haven't left my office in a while, I hope my fists haven't gotten rusty. Five clones created by Red's pen, the mythical zone fruit, baked Danuki. The three admirals, Garp, were brought out alongside even the fleet admiral, Kong. Click, Redfield then opened his umbrella and floated away with a mysterious smile as he gazed at the explosion nearby. Shaki growled in annoyance as his prey escaped, leaving him with a few false enemies. Dash 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 dash. Above Glint Island, nearly 8,000 meters in the sky was another fight. Screech. A loud cry broke out as a majestic sunbird flapped its mesmerizing wings and blew out an inferno. On the other side was a man with a katana. River of Death. Zebek slashed down his Mokashiroku as an arc of utter death raged out as it completely withered away the air around it. Boom. Saul who had already spent over 15 hours since he had fully used awakened his fruit and was knowingly approaching his end. In the time that had passed, Zebek had had some fun. Death Storm. The crazy pirate's open palm suddenly exploded with withering black swirls of energy as it seemed to storm up into a black mass of endless despair. The torrents of death felt like wind. However the wind wasn't actually there as it had all but withered away. The torrents were literal streams of death energy that slashed and whirled around the disaster that Zebek brought. Saul felt his divine wings made of solar flames slowly wither away as dull gray feathers slowly appeared. He gave out a loud screech mixed with pain and rage. He then gathered his energy and condensed it to his very core. Grand solar burst, like a supernova. The body released incredible amounts of unbelievably hot flames as they countered the swirls of death. Though Zebek, who had seen the ever-decreasing strength of his adversary, was losing interest. Zebek controlled his endless supply of death energy as it rippled into being, whirling and crying out in impatience. Greedy to pull others to its deathly embrace, a giant beast started to form around the great sin as his body fueled the attack. Two legs, two arms. A humanoid body that stood around 40 meters in height. Vu asterisk. And then the black energy swirled around the face as giant skulls popped into being. Not one but three. They were animal skulls that glowed with an ominous light in their eye sockets. Sharp horns were erected all over the back of the deathly beast. It was simply horrific. Fiend of death. The incarnation of pure death seemed to bring forth its anger in a deafening cry. The growl alone would cause most to shudder in fear their primal instincts over flooded. Soul's eyes were filled with dread as he soon made up his mind. If I die, 
I shall do so in the most glorious of ways. A literal sun seemed to appear as it stormed out of the sunbird's body. The golden halo sharp the rays of the sun as they amalgamated into a single attack. Grand solar eclipse. Dash 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 dash. Back to the scorched sea. Tens of thousands of cannonballs were launched as countless bullets were fired across the broken lands. They skimmed over the rocky platform and rained down upon the marines. 9,000, 8,700, 8,300, 7,900, 7,600, the numbers dropped by the passing minutes. All the while arcs of light continued to shine through the cracks of the mountain shield that held the blast from before. 6,900, alas, it finally stopped. Thud. Zephyr fell to a single knee as he felt his stamina greatly lessen from the constant emission hockey that was used in controlling the explosion. It took nearly 20 minutes. Sengoku transformed back into his human form as he too exhaled a heavy breath. Shatter. Basara's mountains fell apart as the rocks rained down onto the devastated seas nearby. What a ridiculous attack. Garp sighed as he felt the need to inhale a few tons of rice crackers. Someone check on Kurawashi. A few vice admirals arrived and found a giant hole in one of the marine warships. A crater. Masao San is alive, but. A highly decorated rear admiral voiced out. But what? H his body is. In horrendous condition. The rear admiral was left shocked and frozen as he saw Kurawashi. Blood dribbled out from his skin as charred flesh remained all over his body. You could smell it. The scent of burnt skin. Almost as if one left a slab of meat in the oven for far too long. Kurawashi's face was left scarred and unrecognizable. The messy yet dazzling admiral was left with a hideous appearance. Faint groans escaped the fallen Masao's mouth, he was conscious but in intolerable pain. After all, being bathed in the heat from an atomic bomb and having your innards shaken would leave anyone broken. Basara grinded his teeth in fury, the Oxloid's warship is all but ruined and its commander is also left in such a condition. Damn pirates. And it was true. The Ox Liod's warship that sailed the great seas and induced endless courage in the marines and fear in the pirates was left with a giant gaping hole at the center. If not for Basara, the little portion of wood they stood on would have long since vanished. We were able to save the Ox Bell. As long as it remains, the warship can be rebuilt, Zephyr said as he regained his bearings. Sengoku then saw the carnage of the remaining marines. He saw hundreds of his men die at the passing second. He saw the sea below having changed from an azure blue to a dull red, bathed in his men's blood. He saw the proud marine warships in ruins as only a few remained standing. On top of that, he saw a pillar of the navy, an admiral, left in a condition some would consider worse than death. Sengoku was a conqueror and such a loss was not something he wanted to see, alas, the reality is cruel. Quote dot dot dot, Basara, create mountains parallel to our formation protect us from all fire. Zephyr, Garp, you both clear any large debris that is in the way of our movements. All available vice and rear admirals are to take over the recollection of the wounded and the bodies. Sengoku gave out a deep and helpless breath. He then reached into his pocket and took out a snail and issued a single order. All troops, make a full-scale retreat, immediately. The heavy words laced with anger resounded even through the mayhem and carnage and brought much-needed relief. Basara's voice then resounded, tend to the wounded, carry the dead if possible. We will shield you, we may have lost the battle but the war will be ours. The admirals, words echoed everywhere as it somewhat brought back the broken spirits, most could only utter a single thought. Loss is temporary, justice is forever. Rumble, the ground suddenly shook as 300 meter tall mountains were extended out from the sides of the formation, parallel to their retreat. They extended tens of kilometers making for a landmark of its own. Garp and Zephyr and the other vice admirals all worked together to smash apart any broken ships in the way. Meanwhile, Sengoku glared at the pirate's side, specifically at the man at the helm. The admiral murmured in understanding, your goal was never to hold us off till Zebek was finished. But rather take down Kurawashi and the Oxloid's warship in a single go and destroy our entire formation in one move. Damien stood at the very front of the suicidal Rambo and gave the admiral a slight smirk. Don't you want to chase them and take them all out, Damien Chan? Shaki's voice reached in his ears. But the young man shook his head. Forget it, we also have many wounded and those four still stand. We may have cut their numbers to a small amount, 
but as the saying goes, a cornered dog will bite. His goal was complete, plus, killing any further would only affect his plans negatively. Shaki nodded and then gave an impressed look. That aside, Damien Chan, it looks like you left. Quite the mark here. The youth smiled and nodded. It wasn't exactly planned but it had a nice look. Even the pirates who were annoyed by the order to remain on standby seemed lost in the sight before them. It was at the area of the explosion, or at least what was left from it. The nuclear bomb that Damien dropped was special, laced in pulverizing energy. The explosion released, though quelled, had some extra spice in it. The pulverizing energy in unison with the nuclear radiation had caused an interesting occurrence. It was a giant crater in the sea. Giant volumes of seawater seemed to whirl into a vortex that was generated from the gaping hole, yet to no avail. The giant rocks that decorated the enormous hole from Basara's shield gave it a rather natural yet fear-inducing look. Added to that, sparks of lightning also seemed to go off every so often. A soft red hue seemed to shine through if one looked closely enough. Overall, it was simply a scar left behind by the scorched sea war that spanned more than two kilometers in diameter. One might even think it was the domain of some mythical beast. It's most likely here to stay. How poetic, Rayleigh commented as he polished his saber, his hair slicked with sweat from the earlier battle. Not just him, but practically all of the participants of the war had taken a great deal of damage. Damien's left arm was left sore and purple after having healed from Garp's punches. He was even missing a few teeth, nothing that some milk couldn't fix. As for the soreness and leftover damage, it was attributed to the grand mastery of armament which Garp was kind enough to display. Apart from him, Silver Axe had skiffs while Wang Ji had cuts all over his hind legs. Rayleigh, apart from his new scars from Saul, was also left with some injuries from Sengoku. A few cracked ribs and whatnot. Lin Lin was munching on one of her ships that had crashed, eating the remains. A thundercloud and miniature sun danced around her voluptuous waist. Kaido sat with a gloomy expression, angered by Damien's consistent rise in strength. The pirates were busy either salvaging for remains or tending to their injuries. Fu asterisk, a sharp whistle blew. Damien and the others looked in the sky and saw a comet descend from the sky. A blazing flame covered the object as it got closer and closer to the ground. Hum, Damien's eyes zoomed in and saw a familiar figure. It was Pride D. Saul. His eyes were widened out, his face was stiff as a corpse. His body was layered with black cracks. Boom. Like a meteor, the body crashed onto the remains of Glint Island, sending ripples of shock out. The inferno body of the overlord caved down into the ground as it ran through the broken island. Per up asterisk, the sea steamed as the body of the fallen pirate dug into the seafloor and the bedrock below. Magma churned all around as the god of fire seemed to have died. Pride D. Saul had fallen and the pirate festival had come to an end. The scorched sea war had also come to a conclusion. The marines were forced to retreat, resulting in a grand victory for the forces of the pirates. With a powerful overlord having died, the world would surely recall this day. A day that would lead to the greatest showdown between the navy and the pirates in history. A day where the sun was plucked from the sky. A day to go down in the annals of time.